this crap up. Like, you know what the Astronauts chewing gum on. Ignition. 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 
Now let's see if we're good. How about Cash App, dollar sign Jaronism? There we go. And you can do that if you want. That's very supportive and helpful. You can also look at the top bar there. We've got uh, how to support the channel. You can become a channel member so you can get the back episodes and things like that. Or you can go to patreon.com if you're interested in the crypto. All right, that's pretty much it. If you want my bio stuff, you can go to link, I'm um, sorry, sleek.bio slash Jaronism and get all my links that away. All right, so we're going to have uh, the second half of the show. We will for sure have you guys on the uh, on the show. So you'll be able to call in. I'll turn on the phone lines. I'll also open the stream yard. Jump in if you want to have a conversation or whatever. And we're going to have a timer this time. People were upset last time. So I'm thinking four minutes or three minutes. I don't know what you guys think, what you think will be better. We will just play it by ear. It's kind of a warm-up episode. I didn't even have an intro ready, so I just kind of made a cheap one real quick. And uh, went just fine. Went just fine, all right? So I'm going to get this chat up on the screen so I can see it. And I guess I got the wrong rock pin up there. That's why it's doing that. So did you guys hear the creed? Did you think it was dumb? Did you? And I'll explain why I it's important to me. And again, it's each person should write their own creed. You know, um, I don't want to believe in somebody else's creed when they say we believe this and that and this and that. You're like, yeah, well, OK, you believe that. But I haven't been shown sufficient evidence to believe that myself. So um, and that's the problem with this. Right. And I'll also read for you here in a second. We'll get the exact uh definition of iconophile for you, or at least a condensed one. Let's see if this will work. And okay. All right. We should get that fixed with the actual Rockton people. There we go. What's up, everyone? Effie Nation. What's up? I'm the good job, Jaron. I'm late and you're on time again. Rooting for you. How about that? Huh? Been perfect for 2023. I'm basically bitch slapping it all over the place. What's up? 3B Big Buddy Bob. Hello, chat. Have a great show, Jaron. I might not know where I've been or where I'm going, but I was a part of the first Iconoclasm episode. That's true. That is true. You got a point there. So if you don't know, oh, I guess I can take this down really. Couldn't we? Probably. Probably do that. Um, let's put that one back up there. There we go. Good. Let's give you the Iconoclasm. I, I mean, what a great name. You know, I was asking everybody for names. Nothing was just hitting me. Nothing was sticking. I was actually going to go with like word of man or I mean, it was just I was like at a loss. And then somebody in the chat wrote, what about iconoclasm? I'm like, what the hell is that word? And they're like, look it up. And you look it up and you're like, what the hell? We've been doing this for seven years. It's exactly what many of us are. So what are we? Well, welcome to iconoclasm. OK, it, the word iconoclasm is formed from the Greek words of icon and breaking. Its primary meaning is the breaking or destroying of images, especially the destruction of images and pictures set up as objects of vener of uh, veneration. It is the attacking or the overthrow of institutions, systems, and cherished beliefs regarded or as fallacious or superstitious. If one is engaged in icon breaking, they are an iconoclast, defined as a breaker or a destroyer of images, or one who assails or attacks cherished beliefs or venerated institutions on the grounds that they are erroneous and perniculous. Pernicious, sorry. To find the truth, one must question everything, so prepare to have your most cherished beliefs questioned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Iconoclast. Now, come on, go ahead. Sorry, I have nothing on the TV here. I need to get something up there or else I feel weird. Let's go here. Put some journalism stuff up there. One more. All right. So I thought it was perfect. It's a perfect word for the show. It is what we're doing. It's what causes so many people problems. It's why um, I'm going to send a, a full case of Vagisil to P-Brain as soon as possible. Um, because he's really very sad that uh, anybody has a different belief than him. We all must believe whatever the, his church fathers have told him. And it's just not how I roll. And I think it's a, a very, very um, disgusting kind of, uh, I don't know, embarrassing quality to have that you're that kind of person. So what do iconoclasts do? We come and we uh, destroy their little uh, make-believe land where they can live over there. They can just do fine just by themselves, just live in that little make-believe area and uh no one will bother you but uh they want everyone else to believe like they do so much so that they'll tell you you're gonna burn in hell if you don't believe what they do so other people like that we've got uh who's the other um jim bob uh made by rim job he's uh also the same thing they're just cucks hate to tell you that's what happens when you have given your entire belief system to some dogmatic faith from 2000 years ago that makes no sense that doesn't jive with today's world it's basically silly, and you go around telling people that that's the truth. It's silly. It's silly, I tell you. Um, let's see here. 
I do have the old Biblioteca here, the the Bible. Uh, that's not Biblioteca, right? Isn't that library? Got that wrong. I did put some tabs in here so we can uh, talk about some things, but I probably should start with the Creed, and then uh, it's kind of long. Yes, I know, but I probably just read it once. But what I wanted to have is a working copy, right? So something that I could improve upon, something that I could um, add to or subtract from as I grow in what I would call my faith. And so I've got all these things in my head of the way I think things work and evidence for it, um, of course. And so I just started writing something the other day. I was on the couch. I was high. You know, it happens. And uh, I was on the couch in the garage, and I just started writing. You know, you start out with, I believe, right? And I believe most people would start that with, I believe in the creator. I believe in one God. I believe, you know, and from there, it just starts flowing. From there, it was just, oh, yeah, I believe this, and I believe this, and I believe this, and I believe this. And then I got to the part of thinking that we need human rights and what the human rights would be that I believe in. And in all, when I look, stand back and look at what I did, I kind of feel like it's um, a world I would like to live in, right? Where laws were generated that way and people acted accordingly. Um, not like this satanic place that we call Earth that is just being overrun by uh, disgusting people, really. Uh, Jeremy Chukaku yesterday, I watched him in an interview, say that the Earth's core stopped spinning and started spinning the other way. So that makes sense. I could see how that could happen. Like, um, oh, actually, probably can't. I would never be able to happen. That. Or is it getting the energy to stop spinning and spinning the other way? Okay. Just make-believe nonsense. But if you become a iconocast, you can uh, destroy those images of the core of the Earth, of the, uh, you know, Jesus, the white Jesus, you know, um, you can destroy these images because they've become too attached or people have become too attached to them. And that's a scary thought when you look at the world and it's exactly what you would expect from people who follow these religions. I mean, basically all the wars, all the hate, everything that goes on. Think about the certain J's and the certain C's and the certain M's and the you know, all these people, they're all religious, they're all fanatics, and they've basically created a hateful world. So if you think God is the author of that, you're a dum-dum, okay? It's not God's design. It's God wasn't designed to bring one book to some people, have it be corrupted, bring another book to the Muslims, tell them that's not the corrupted book. Then you got them fighting over whose book is the... And it's just a joke. Oh, these are my chosen people. Well, no, actually they mean we are. And everybody, if you if you just live on earth, you're a Jew. What he means is that the people that have been circumcised, and they, it just gets so convoluted that you end up jumping off a building. Thank goodness we're in Japan where they've got those nets next to the buildings that we work in. So we actually um, just fall into the net. So we're okay. We live is what I'm saying. We live. All right. So let me bring up here. Uh, hmm. That's a good point, Jaren. Where did you put that? Uh, I don't know. Let's find it. I don't know if it is where I put it. Uh, oh, oh, I know where it's at. It's on Telegram. I don't think I saved it as any kind of word file. Let's bring up the Telegram. Let's go to saves. If you don't have Telegram, I'm telling you, you're missing out. It's a great place to share things between computers, share things between people, um, to have your own saved messages board where you can just save everything there. It's free storage, like unlimited put every picture you have, every video you have. Now, I'm not saying it won't go down in a you know, couple months and then you lose everything, but just saying for now, it's not bad. Um, so let me read a dish. And then we can, it's, you know, something that if people see things like, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's how it works. Or I don't think that's how, um, you know, I would love to hear your evidence of why not. So we can do that tonight. And I went the wrong direction on my scroll. All right. So I'm going to read this real quick and then we will um, get a move on. So we got to read that, and then I've got just a couple things to cover, and then we're just going to take your calls for episode number one and see what the pulse is of people. And, uh, yeah, people are going to get very upset by the creed, just so you know. So be ready to protect me, as you should all people who have free speech rights, by saying, Jaron can say whatever the fuck he wants. Try that, yeah? Everybody repeat after me. Jaron can say whatever the fuck he wants, okay? So when people cry to you and say, why do you watch him? What's he doing? He's, he's trying to be God. He wants to be, you know, just tell him relax and go back to worshiping their church fathers or their priests and pastors and the Pope and all that stuff. All right. Let us uh, get a little music binder. What do we have? What do we have? This one? 
But can we make it quieter? I don't really like that one, actually. I like, um... How about this is the background music? Jesus, take, the wheel. take it every... Oh, sorry. Not that one. Let's try something else. Uh, this? Nope. I don't like that one either. Maybe we don't have... What is Haunted House? Uh, that's funny. I used that for the uh, intro for the NASA, <laughs> the NASA administrator, who looks like he's 174. Uh, that's not good for the background. What is going on? Where's all my good music? Hmm. All right. Oh, uh, that's that one. Speaker's Corner. Uh, nope, not that one. Circus music. That's for NASA. It says porn music on there. It's for just the tips. And. I don't see anything that I can use. What is meditative background? Maybe that'll work. Good enough for me. All right, here we go. Read the creed. So again, and I encourage you to do your own. It really challenges you for what do you believe? What do you have evidence for? What do you leave out? What do you want to say in it? And this way you can always adjust it. But it's how I feel the world works, and it matches my worldview, my observations, and therefore I'm going to run with it. Let's get it going. All right. And play. Thank you. All right. So my creed goes, I believe in one God, the Almighty, the supreme source, the creator of all things in heaven and on earth, both visible and invisible. I believe that the world exists and can only exist because of the will of God. I believe the earth exists nowhere, but in the mind or domain of God and only because God chooses to allow it to exist. I believe that God is the creator of all things, and without God, all things that exist would cease to do so. I believe that God exists outside of time because the infinite has no beginning and no end, and as an infinite being, God had no way to experience things in a physical world, such as being born, suffering, dying, and everything in between, as those things can only exist within time. I believe that in order to experience a physical and carnal existence, the infinite mind of God chose to create the world that existed in time in order to experience everything that one can experience. God chose to divide itself into an unknown number of separate souls, okay. spirits, or pieces of God. This was done so that the infinite might experience all that is finite. I believe that God chose to give us each, I'm sorry, I believe that God chose to give each of those small pieces of itself the gift of life, personality, and the gift of free will. I believe that you and me, as well as every human being who has ever existed or will ever exist, on earth are each a piece of the creator. As such, you get to experience the world through your eyes and senses on behalf of God. I believe that each human being is born into the world. They're born with an inborn spirit of God, the creator inside them. Hence, all human beings are a piece of the creator, and as such, all humans should be treated as a piece of the infinite and loving God. I believe that with that gift of free will, the outcome of any and all interactions, events, activities, and situations is unknowable to God. The only known thing is that God could end the world at any time and return to the existence from which it came, that place that is outside of time. I believe that as a result of us each being born with that piece of the Creator inside us, that God can be known, thanked, reached, and experienced, especially when acting according to what is good. What is good can also be called God's will. I believe there is a concerted and organized effort to take away your birthright, an opportunity to show God that you can act within that will. This was done by constantly teaching you that the truth is found outside of yourself. You were taught truth comes from textbooks written by the authorities, from teachers, professors, priests, pastors, and anything else they can think of, rather than telling you to search and explore that feeling deep inside you. I believe that when one helps others or acts in a selfless way, and according to what is good, that they receive a satisfactory feeling inside them, and that is the Creator telling you that you're on the right track. When you turn against that inner voice that some may call your conscience, and you choose instead to live your life against the inborn voice, you are choosing to follow the adversary. Many know this as worshiping or following Satan, the adversary. I believe in the existence of God. I'm sorry. I believe the existence of God is known and obvious to all human beings. The world is a magical place, and some men got, have gone out of their way to convince others that there is no God and that all things came into existence. All things came into existence on their own through a giant explosion that created all that there is. I believe that if a person chooses to believe this, they are showing the Creator disdain for the voice of truth inside them, and instead showing the Creator that they would rather trust and put faith in others than in themselves and the gift that God has given them. However, they were given free will, and just as 
and have just as much right as you do to choose what they do with their free will. Whether they choose to go through life with the will of God as their compass, or if they choose instead to go the opposite direction, ignoring the inborn spirit and will of God, and lead others astray as well. I believe that those who choose evil, destruction, deceit, or anything outside of the will of God have turned away from the inborn voice and choose instead to place themselves on high as if they themselves were God instead of a small piece equal to every human being ever born. I believe no man has seen God or heard his voice as anything other than that voice inside them. I do not believe that God chose to incarnate as one human being for the forgiveness of sins, but instead is incarnate in all human beings. As such, God has committed no crimes and no murders. God cannot act outside of God's will. It would be impossible to do so. But it can be said that God has actually committed all crimes and been the victim of all acts of evil since God experiences these things through the man in which he dwells. I believe that since humans have been given the higher mind and a brain capable of complex thought, that the very knowledge of God is possessed by all of us. But throughout time, it goes without saying that some of those who are born with free will will use their free will in a way that is not in line with the will of God. In fact, at times, some have completely disregarded their inborn spirit and have ventured down a path of total destruction. I believe that with the gift of free will comes the inevitable consequence of evil. This will exist, and it will at times infringe upon the rights and activities of those acting within the will of God. When this takes place, humans will need to at times enact and enforce laws, both to deter and remind them of what is good and to punish those who continue to injure. I'm sorry, who choose to injure or infringe on the rights of others. I believe we are all born with a certain guaranteed human rights, and that no one should ever lose any of their God-given rights unless they have chosen to take those rights from others. Once that has been determined, those who have harmed others will need to be separated from those who respect others until they can prove that they will act within the rules agreed upon. If they continue to act outside the will, those humans who others see as in the embodiment of God may need to make a harsh decision to separate ones who cannot act within the will of God. This may include ending the life of one, especially if they have taken a life. Outside of murder, there is no reason to kill somebody for their abuses of the law. Even child predators and the like should be separated from humanity and kept away from them as long as needed until proven that they will not hurt again. I believe all humans... Uh, okay, that's fine. Just a little quieter. Where did I leave off? I believe all humans have the same rights as we are all the children of God. I believe in the golden rule to treat others as you would want to be, them to treat you. I believe the following are the God-given rights of every human being, and any and all infringement upon these rights or by anyone constitutes a crime and can come with consequences. Consequences that include the removal of the rights below, those rights are and in no particular order, the right to life, the right to freedom, the, life, the right to a life free of violence and harm, the right to equality between men and women, the right of choice, the right of bodily autonomy, the right to join in union or to say no to union, the right to choose your own medical procedures such as circumcision, the right to decide what happens to your body without coercion, the right to ch of children to control their own body, a child who knows that they are in control of their own body is less likely to fall victim to sexual abuse, freedom from torture, the right to a safe and happy childhood, freedom from slavery, the right to liberty and security of person and home, the right to own property and the right to property owned, the right to be treated with humanity and separation, freedom of movement, the right of a fair and speedy trial in front of a jury of your peers, the right to presumed innocence, the right to privacy, freedom of religion and belief as long as these rights are not infringed upon, freedom of expression of free speech, the right of peaceful assembly, the right to join in union and start a family, I think that's on there twice, I gotta check that, the right to participate in public affairs, the right to equality before the law, the right to work and the freedom to hire and to choose to accept work or not, the right to rest and leisure, the right to just and favorable conditions at work, freedom, of ex freedom from exploitation, the right to a basic standard of living, the right to a shelter, the right and freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom of parents to choose what school they wish for their children. I believe that the above rights are the basic moral principles of human behavior and must be protected by law. They are inalienable fundamental rights that all persons are inherently entitled to simply because he or she is a human being. That they are also applicable everywhere and at any time in the sense that they are universal and are the same for everyone. As a human being, you have the obligation to protect the rights of all human beings and to do so and, not, and do nothing to infringe on those rights. It is understood by all that the only way to have your rights infringed upon is when you have infringed the rights of others. Only as a result of due process can these rights be taken away and to do so must be approached with all utmost and possible care and by those who the society has elected as the most upstanding. 
I believe that no one culture and no one nationality or society has special claim to God. I believe that God cannot write a book or a poem unless it is penned through the ma- through man, in which case it is immediately fallible. I believe we are all God's children, and as such, we are all his chosen people, since we all were given the same gift of life. No person is above any other person until that one person takes actions that infringe on the rights of another. At that point, he is stepped below the other. The one holding true to the rights of others shall be helped, held in higher regard than anyone attacking or looking to injure or infringe upon the rights. I believe that the earth is a proving ground. It is a test. I believe that we all have been given the same textbook with which to study, and that textbook has no words. It is the book of nature. By listening to the voice inside you, by listening to the voice inside others who speak about that voice, to listen to nature, to listen to your inner spirit, this is how you will be led towards the good and hence be doing the will of God. I believe that when we take our last breath, that some of us here will cease to exist forever. Those who infringed on the rights of others and did not do what they needed to do in order to make up for their usurpati- usurpations, usurpations oh, that's that word. Uh, against others will die and sleep forever. I believe some people... Let me put this one back up here. Mm-hmm. There we go. I believe some people may have done what was right or good, but failed to see the true test and instead fell for the deceptions of men. I believe that those souls may return again to the material world to get another chance to prove themselves. And lastly, I believe that God has a reward for those who enact God's will here on earth without the need of being told what to do and when to do it. Everyone will make mistakes as truly no man is perfect. However, once the truth has been revealed to you and you recognize that voice inside you, it becomes your responsibility to choose the correct path. The correct path is always the path that is good and the path that is right. To pretend that you don't know the difference or to pretend that you were born without the Spirit of God... I'm sorry. To pretend to not know the difference is to pretend that you were born without the Spirit of God inside you, which is impossible as no man can live unless God's Spirit dwells within. So that's basically it. Um, Wait, there might be another section. Do I have one more paragraph? It didn't sound like it's supposed to end there. Um... Oh, yeah, one more paragraph. Uh, I can live unless God's Spirit dwells within. I believe that to find out what is next, you must navigate this carnal world of lies and deception and recognize that the only truth is in you. The only thing true in the physical world is you, and you are the peace of God, and at the end of the road, you will realize that all truth lies just there within. So that is the creed. I don't think I needed to... I think it should be self-explanatory. I don't think there's anything really I need to point out. Uh... That's just how I feel. I do believe in reincarnation in some way. I do think some people come back. So why some and not others? Well, I think that you can pass this test, you can fail this test, or you can uh, get another shot at it. So Mrs. Niece, for instance, died when she was five. So I'm assuming that that person is reincarnated. Um, You know, if somebody like my mom that I don't think passed the test here, I believe she's probably already been reincarnated. So... That's just my personal belief uh, about heaven. Heaven doesn't make sense. Things like that don't make sense to me. Uh, loving God, sending people to hell, of course, is a joke. Um, would never happen. It's um, uh, uh, all fabrications of men, right? So everything that's wrong with the Bible is clearly seen to be the works of men. It's, uh, it's really that simple, is that God would do godly things, right? godly things, would not uh, do things that men do which is just like kill for no reason and demand sacrifice and bring me the first calves and cut them on my altar and drip blood on my altar and do all these. I mean, it's just not what a creator would do in my mind at all. So let me see what I wanted to read here. And then I'm going to, I'm going to bring the chat up and see what you guys uh, have. So we talked about that. Um, I mean, I, I still have a problem with circumcision. I, I mean, do you really believe anybody that the creator of all came down and said, I want these boys to chop the ends of their penis off because it marks the covenant. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Does it sound like something God would do or something the Jews would do? I'll let you decide on that one. I'll let you decide. But I mean, here, God clearly liked the circumcised because I'll just read you from, we are in a Genesis, I'm sorry, we are in Exodus. We are in Exodus chapter 4 starting at verse 24. On the journey, at a place where they spent the night, the Lord came upon Moses and would have killed him. But Sephora took a piece of the flint and cut off her son's foreskin. And touching his feet, she said, You are a spouse of blood to me. Then God let Moses go. 
at the time she said a spouse of blood in regard to the circumcision. So, uh, you know, this just hilarious stories. God was ready to kill Moses, but thank goodness his wife cut the tip off the sun, wiped it on his feet, and then God let him go because I, I can see why. Makes a lot of sense to me. Um, uh, makes a lot of sense. So just reading some of these crazy verses that I don't know why people, you know, and I was listening to somebody the other day and they were talking about, oh, a Catholic church, we read the Bible because they read it. And it's like, no, they read you little tiny stories. They purposely leave out all the crazy stuff, right? Um, this is on Leviticus chapter one. Okay. Now, this is not out of context. This is not all the complaints people give. Well, you don't understand. You don't know the times. It doesn't matter what the times are. When you listen to what the creator of the world is demanding of people, you have to recognize that that's not how you make good people. Okay? It doesn't matter what his reasoning is. Oh, you don't understand God's ways? Well, I do understand that people, to become a murderous, disgusting group, if they were ordered to murder, that's a good start on that path for them to be murderous. And if you instead were God and you just snapped your fingers so those people disappeared or those giants disappeared, then you still keep the soul of the people as good. They didn't have to go kill a bunch of people and rob their children and, and women and bring them back as sex slaves, which is what God basically orders. So let's go here. We're at Leviticus chapter 1, towards the end, verse 14. Um, if he offers a bird as a holocaust to the Lord, he shall choose a turtle dove or a pigeon as his offering. Having brought it to the altar where it is to be burned, the priest shall snap its head loose and squeeze out its blood against the side of the altar. Its crop and feathers shall be removed and thrown onto the ash heap at the east side of the altar. Then, having split the bird down the middle without separating the halves, the priest shall burn it on the altar over the wood on the fire as a holocaust, a sweet-smelling oblation to the Lord. Okay, The Lord does not have, no, have a nose. The Lord does not smell things. Humans smell things. Do you see? Do you see how we've, they've just given, it's a human creation, okay? The God that likes the smell of burning flesh, the, the God that's jealous and vindictive is not a God, okay? Um, and it goes on, I mean, you could just read, I'm mean, over on chapter three now, same thing at the end of it. Uh, if he presents a goat, he shall bring it before the Lord, and after laying his hand on its head, he shall slaughter it before the meeting tent. But Aaron's sons shall splash its blood on the sides of the altar, from it he shall offer an oblation to the Lord, the fatty membrane over the inner organs, and all the fat that adheres to them, as well as the two kidneys, with the fat on them near the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he must serve above the which he must sever above the kidneys. All this the priest shall burn on the altar as food for the sweet smelling oblation. All the fat belongs to the Lord. This shall be the perpetual ordinance for your descendants, wherever they may dwell, you shall not partake of any fat of any or any blood. So again, when they talk about the Bible has no contradictions, does anybody know what perpetual means? Let's look it up. Just to be sure, because I'm pretty sure perpetual means forever. Let's see. Um, perpetual. So it does say never ending or changing. Okay. So it says here that you got to do all this work. You got to take the dove. You got to kill the bird. You got to kill the animal. And then it says all this. I'm sorry, all the fat belongs to the Lord. This shall be a perpetual ordinance for your descendants. Wherever they may dwell, you shall not partake of any. So again, is that being practiced now or is it just another one? Oh, no, that Jesus came and changed it. Oh, yeah, because God says he's never changing and perpetual and the Bible's always right. Then Jesus comes and changes the Bible, makes it so that then God did change. It also says God isn't a man, but you tell me God is a man, that God never is a son of man. I mean, I hear people still say, oh, Jesus is God's only begotten son. What do you mean? Do you understand what begotten means? What about Adam? What about David? He says, David, you're my begotten son. And then later sees Jesus says, Jesus is my only begotten son. Oh, that's a little, little weird. A little weird. Um, everything's about the, this blood. I mean, Leviticus 4 again. Bringing the bullock to the entrance of the meeting tent before the Lord, he shall lay his hand on his head and slaughter it. The anointed priest shall then take some of the bullock's blood, bring it into the meeting tent where his finger in, will be dipped in the blood. He shall sprinkle it seven times, never six and never eight, okay? Seven times. Guys, don't forget that. Uh, otherwise, you just get smashed, I think. It's pretty weird. Um, where is the seven times? Sprinkle it seven times before the Lord towards the veil of the sanctuary. 
The priest shall also put some of the blood on the horns of the altar. Very important that we do this. Very important that God directs these people. Imagine what would have happened if they didn't put any blood on the on the horns on the altar. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff would have gone down. Um, of the frag of the fragrant incense which is before the Lord in His meeting tent, the rest of the bullock's blood shall He pour out at the base of the altar of holocaust, which is at the entrance of the meeting tent. From the sin offering bullock, He shall remove all the fat, the fatty membrane over the inner organs and all the fat that adheres to them, as well as two kidneys, which the fat on them near the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he shall sever above the kidneys. This is the same as is meant is removed from the ox of a peace offering, and the priest shall burn it on the altar of holocaust, the hide of the bullock and all its flesh with its head, legs, inner organs, and offal, in short, the whole bullock, shall be brought outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are deposited, and there be burned up in the wood fire. At the place of the ashes heap, there, sh it, there shall it be burned. So it's just, to me, crazy. We got this saying it's going to be perpetual rules of us going. And again, the reason people don't believe us anymore is because it's ludicrous. Nobody's going to go take a turtle dove and go slice its neck in front of an altar and sacrifice that to God. Just who likes sacrifices like that? Who likes the killing sacrifices? That's Satan, not God. Okay? God can do anything. Why would he need to send his son to die for your sins? He can just be like, you're forgiven. People are always like, oh, you beca we became so gross. God couldn't even stand to look at us. He didn't even care to look. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> How could that happen? You don't, you don't understand what God means, obviously. You don't get it. Um, let's see if there's anything else I marked. I've got a couple note or little papers here. Let's see what this one is. Um, oh, so remember I told you about the Satan story. and the, We talked about that last week. You can go back to last week and watch if you want. There's two Bible stories that are identical, and one of them says it was caused by Satan, and one of them says it was caused by uh, God. Okay, so something else I learned this week as I was going through and trying to label this binder or this Bible, I kept looking all over for Kings 1 and 2. All I could find was Kings 3 and 4, and then I looked it up, and it's like, oh, Kings 3 and 4 is 1 and 2. I'm like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. I bet you Kings 3 and 4 are 3 and 4, and you probably had an original 1 and 2. That's just a guess, but, you know, who am I? Uh, what's this paper here? Oh, nice. This is the Book of Wisdom, but I have something marked here. I'm going to read it. I don't remember what it's about. Uh, Book of Wisdom. So we are on chapter 13, Book of Wisdom. But all men are vain, in whom there is not the knowledge of God, and who by those good things that are seen could not understand him that is neither by attending to the works have acknowledged who was the workman. Totally agree with that. Now, this is where the Bible is telling truths. This is very true. I don't think there's anybody in the world that is, they may have hushed that conscience away. They may not look at that anymore. They may not want to talk about it, but they were all at one time believers, I think. But have imagined, enter the fi either the fire or the wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the great water or the sun and the moon to be the gods that rule the world. With those beauty, if they, being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much the Lord of them is more beautiful than they. For the first author of beauty made all those things. Or if they admired their power and their effect, let them understand by them that he made them. He is mightier than they. For by the greatness of their beauty and of the creature, the creator of them may be seen so as to be known thereby. But yet, as, they, as these they are less to be blamed, for they perhaps err, seeking God and desirous to find him, I'm right here, for being conversant among his works, they search and they are persuaded that the things are good, which are seen, but then again, they are not to be pardoned. For if they were able to know as much as make a judgment of the world, how did they not know, how did they not more easily find out about the Lord thereof? But unhappy are they, and their hope is among the dead, who have called gods the works of the hands of men, gold and silver, the inventions of art. So think about if you maybe worship a god of gold and silver who might be an invention of art. And resembles and resemblances of beasts, or an unprofitable stone of the work of an ancient hand, or if an artist, a carpenter, hath cut down a tree proper for his use of the wood, and skillfully taken off all the bark thereof, 
and with its art delightfully formeth a vessel profitable from the common use. Okay, so they make up a supplication of the week and for the good journey. Thought there was something else I was supposed to read here, but I don't see it. Okay. Um just going a little further in chapter 14, basically says, But the idol that is made of hands is cursed, as well it as he that made it, because he made it good, and it because it's being a fruit, what? It's being a frail, sorry, my binder is a little screwed up. It's being a frail is called a god. It doesn't seem like English. But to God, the wicked are, I'm sorry, but to God, the wicked and his wickedness are hateful alike. For that which is made together with him that made it, Shall suffer no, shall suffer torments. Therefore, there shall be no respect had even to the idols of the Gentiles, because the creatures of God are turned to an abomination, a temptation of the souls of men, and a snare to the feet of the universe. So, idol worship was obviously a um, big thing. Let's see if I got anything else here, or else we're ready to get to phones. Now, what's here? Destruction of idols in Isaiah. I don't really see what I wanted to go there for. And I think we're good there. So you got Kings 3. And there's another one, another book in here called Papulimon or something, which means, I forgot, Ecclesiastes or something. Something like that. I don't remember. And I've got a bunch of books in here. This Catholic Bible that I don't think other people have. Like, uh, do you guys have Lamentations? Do you have Baruch? Baruch? Do you have Ezek? What's that one? Um... Okay. Oh, Ezekiel. Sorry. Now I know what I'm doing. Okay. We've got all kinds of stuff in here. This is the let's go to the red marker. There we go. Okay. Um yeah, just uh, you know, this is Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. I say to you further that if two of you shall agree on earth about anything at all for which they ask, it will be sh it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For whereas two or three people are gathered together, for my sake, there I am in the midst of them. Okay? So maybe he's in the midst of us now. I'm not really sure. But uh, then Peter came up and said, okay. And that's a good one. Let's see if there's anything else. What's this one? But did they... Oh, I still think my idea is brilliant. Nobody wants to. I mean, basically, it says in the Bible that the, this is one way we can prove it wrong, really, but I guess you really can't. But that nobody knows of the day and hour that the world's going to end, right? So there's 8 billion of us. So what if we all take tonight at midnight? I'll take between midnight and one, and then have somebody else take one to two, somebody else two. So now we're all holding it accountable, and we would actually see justice be done, in my opinion. Anyway. It's another subject, another story. Uh, I showed you guys last week the two stories of the 4,000 fish and the 5,000 fish, which were just dumb. Again, these uh, disciples act like they don't have a clue because they're like, where are we going to get food to feed these people? Jesus, there's too many people to feed. We only got three loaves. Jesus is like, where were you last week? None of you guys remember? I think it's because they're, personally, I think it's just a lot of pot smoking going on back in the biblical days. All right, let's get moving on to... Uh, get the phones ready. Bring you guys on. You can ask away at anything. Should I turn on the Q and A for the chat? I should try it. Let's just turn it on. So if you have a question for me, let's try and put it in the Q and A section, which is going to come up here shortly. Shortly. Slightly. Uh, start Q and A. Start Q and A. What? I don't know if this is the question. I'm just going to put ask away. Start Q and A. Oh, come on. Uh, so it took me to a Q&A page. All right, this should be fine, I guess. But I don't know if I can put that on the screen. Um, Jesus is an idol, changed my mind. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you can call him besides that. It's like they almost did it on purpose, right? And then to think that they put his death scene on this cross and put it up in every church and you wear it around your neck. I now see, if you were wearing a cross necklace, just so you know how I feel about you, that is your leash. That is your leash. And the Jews are carrying you around and taking you wherever they want to go, in and out of banks, and then back around to go in and out of the bank again. So you're just being led along by a little choke chain because uh, because that's what happens. Uh, so wait, I forgot what I was doing. Yeah, we're going to get this going. 
And StreamYard is going to be, oh, I do have the phone number on here, too. Let's just bring it over. Bring it over. Let's see, where is the phone? What? Oh, here. Boom. There you go. 888-698-FLAT. Just give me one second. That's not quite ready yet. I should have waited two seconds. Everything's slow for some reason. So feel free to ask any questions of me if you have any question at all. If you're brave enough to ask it, I'm brave enough to answer it. All right, let's go to StreamYard and see if we can get anybody to talk really shown today. Let's go here, enter studio. God, my eyes are hurting today. Pro tip, okay, great. And let's go with this. Oops, start cam. Why is it not going through? Oh, we got to turn on virtual camera. Okay, now they've got me. I've got them. Is anybody there? Nobody's there. All right, well, if anybody wants to join, you can jump on now. It is tinyurl.com. There we go. We got one. We got one. It's Pitch Lumen in the house. It's Pitch Lumen in the house. What's up, Pitch? Hey, Jaron. How's it going? Good. You, can you explain your name for us? Everybody wants to know. What's that? Your name. Explain it to us. Um. Okay, so... um. My name, uh, Pitch Lumen. Pitch has like a lot of um, definitions. The the it's sonoluminescence, really, is what it is. Like sound, and then light is is lumens, uh, right. like measured in lumens. And so it's like sonoluminescence. Um, but then, like I like baseball as well. Um, nice sport. And I, I'm a pitcher, so. Um, and then uh, I, it's kind of has to do with like part of being like the light of the earth. Um, as far as like the salt and light, uh, that, uh, the Bible mentions, um, to like, uh, preserve the word and preserve the goodness of how we are supposed to be. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, like the sound and the word and, and then in the beginning, um, they're like God spoke, God speaking was first. And so I think like it's. Try, I, try, I try to pay homage to the the most high the creator um because that's really like the 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 reason for my channel is, is heavily based on on like the bible and um and that's why like i think uh like i i think the bible is really important and so like and that you're talking about this too i think is um as as christians we're supposed to um not be offended by criticism but use it to sharpen our iron right. um, and let the anvil of the Bible try to wear out uh, the hammers um, that want to critique. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's um, and then like sun and luminescence is like stars and stuff too. But yeah, so there's, there's like a few things in it. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Okay. I like it. Let me start your clock, and you can go right ahead. And I told everybody yesterday, I think it was, that we did get a meeting with you and Austin and I. It was fun. Nice little combo. Um, can you tell people that's true so they don't think I'm lying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yep, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Sorry, it's just it's, uh, it's, it's pretty quiet on, on my end. Um, no problem. Just kidding with you. But, uh, yeah, we were we were together, um, or we, we had a talk, and Austin and I have, have been talking. Um, we're going to. Uh, hopefully try to get something together here. Sweet. Um, and actually, uh, I talk with people about like the earth, um, like, and then like the anti biblical earth or people will reach out. And this guy actually tagged me in a link, um, that Mick tune put up a video of you. And then it's of you and I talking and this guy like reached out to me. He's like, you all, oh, you don't want to, you know, you, uh, call into Jaron show or whatever. And it's like, well, I mean, anyone can. One of the things I don't get about those types of people is like, why don't you call into Jaron's show and talk with him? Right. Like, why do you like you? You got you got an let, internet. Let me connection. explain why though. Let me explain so, why. It's because they, um, it's because none of those guys can do their own content. So all those guys, because none of those guys are capable of doing their own content. They have to use us to make them content. So without me talking to you, without me reading my creed, without me doing something, McToon has no show. So that's why they just basically watch our stuff and then immediately go and make a video about it. It's the only way they can get content. Whereas I can sit here right now and I could do the entire show three, four five hours and not mention anybody else. 
because I can do my own content. Yeah, it's you have originality and uh, and you're able to to create uh, as opposed to them having to kind of use your material. And that's like I know uh, one of like they, they say a lot of stuff that is is something else. But apparently, like Mick Toon, I emailed him and he has yet to email me back. I emailed him yesterday. He's like, I'd be happy to talk with you about the math and everything of uh he was talking about your experiment that um oh it pisses me off i, I, that, I, I mean I, it's I, closer to the flat earth and everything but even you i mean you've said it like if 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 that was a globe proving thing the globe people there would have been like he did it he did it and everyone would have flipped out the the documentary people so all that stuff is i uh, want if mctoon ever responds i'll be i'll be talking with him about that so just be careful he does um, uh give hundred dollar bounties for your home address like he did for mine psychopath it's what he gave a hundred dollar bounty to his viewers to find my home address. So he's a, a that's psych- really creepy. It's very creepy. It's very gay. Very creepy. And gay. Yeah. That's, um, I, and that like, what ideas you're supposed to be able to talk about ideas. That's getting into like stalking, like that stuff. That's straight whack. And he's wrong about what he says too. It's so funny. They, they thought that, um, I was, uh, admitting that the earth was a globe because I told people I blocked out some numbers on my ISS transit because I w- didn't want them to reverse engineer it. And they're like, oh, the only way you could reverse engineer it is if you know the Earth's a globe and this. I'm like, no, dipshits, the site. You could just go and re-input my numbers that I had in and it would tell you exactly where my house is. It has nothing to do with anything Yeah, else. Just idiots. Where you made the observation. I actually, I, I saw something about you, like a guy from like uh, Belgium or something was calling you out on that. And, and you were like, okay, well here, I'll, I'll punch in exactly yeah, where you're you calling it in from. And he, you like completely called him out on it. He gave you some coordinates and you're like, all right, is it, he, you were like putting in this, 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 and you're like, all right, you're in this area and now you're in this region and now you're in this city and this is where you typed it in from. And you like, you got him on it. And it was like, wow, like that's pinpoint. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They're just, yeah. And then he's like, Oh, okay. Well, I didn't realize it. You know, he was like, because they thought like I was doing that for in the future. I'm like, no, I was doing it for the people that watched the video when it came out. They could have just gone and put those numbers in and got the reverse engineer. Now today you can't do it because it doesn't keep, you know, transits from that long ago, uh, right? It'll only keep like the last two weeks or something. So if you're doing it live and you're showing your audience, you have to take it out or else they can find exactly where you live. But with now, it doesn't matter now because you couldn't find it now anyway. You couldn't get the numbers. Yeah, exactly and I mean, now. anyone, if, if some that's really a, a strange, like if someone's going to try to find your address why would you need to know that like why like yeah it's ridiculous you you would think that uh, who you know, like who knows people that think like that where they can get off to and that's like kind of like something i wanted to say like about your your creed is i think you you do bring up a lot of a lot of good points and a lot of things that i think uh resonate i think because uh, the lord has written on our hearts i think you have that that resonance um with with a lot of that stuff uh with a lot of what is like our um like how to treat one another as, as hum as humanity. I, I think, uh, like, I, I think a lot of that stuff goes that way. And, uh, with these people like that can, you know, be mean or nasty or, or do who knows what, or, uh, especially if you're like an amoral, like an- if you think you're an animal and that right. it's like eat or be eaten and all that stuff, like you're a lot more desensitized to, to violence and everything. And I think, um, that that's, you know kind of an issue that we need to as humanity i mean if nobody if you never picked up a weapon and fired it at somebody no one would ever get hit by a a weapon so yeah it's um um, i i I tend to go back and forth though i used to think it was like oh if you're a flat earther you're a good person you're an atheist you're a bad person i really did feel that because it seemed like at first everybody that i met that was a flat earther they were like all breath of uh, breath of fresh air they were awesome it was fun to hang out with we had so much in common now, since then, a lot of um, truthers have gone, you know, they've gone w- wayward. So I don't know if I, I, and actually I've seen them act worse than Globers most of the time. Some of these flat earthers are worse than the Globers as far as what they've called me, accusations they've made, just total lies they've made up. So I can't really feel that way that's a shame. anymore. What? And then that's, you would think like, cause when you understand where we are living and in this special creation, it really, it, it should change a lot of people, especially a lot of people in a, in a really big way. I think so too, um, yeah. and, and I, I, I do think like, I have heard some critiques of Christians, uh, that, that do talk about you in a certain way. And I, I don't, I mean, we're supposed to like 
have open rebuke towards people, but not like condemn them. And I, I, I really, I, it, it hurts my ears when I hear people say like, this person's going to go here because they don't believe or this or that. Like, um, I, I do think that if people like my, one of the, my, my views on, on this is like, I do think people, uh, need to accept Jesus as, as the savior, mm-hmm. um, to, but I also think that Ready even right now there's an Click atheist out there. Oh, I know now. Jesus. He stands for this, this, and this, and they might not understand him. I think Welcome God knows post. if people had you a chance to really know truly what Jesus taught. I don't think any interface. human could reject Jesus because like unconditional love and uh, doing unto others as you would want them to do to you and that type of thing. We all can, can kind of jive with that. And I, I think the only entities that would be agitated by that would be demons. And so I, I think that I, I think can look like people. Um, but I do think that, uh, God is the only one who can, who can judge people. And, uh, so I, I don't think that's a place for any Christians. I think if a Christian had something to say to you, they should get onto your show and, and that you, you know, you graciously allow people onto your show. So people should, should step up and say, cause there are Christians out there that know the Bible a lot better than me. I'm, uh, and so I, I think like that, you know, you're, you're asking for people to, to, you know, call you out on this stuff or give you clarity or anything like that. And that's, uh, like, that's a fantastic thing. And so I, I don't know why you, you like, cause there are some people that I, I really do, like, I really am a huge fan of their channels, but they do say certain things. And it's like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess you can't agree with everybody, but, um, no, but and you just, I mean, it, what people need to recognize is, is somebody doing damage or not? Right. Am I hurting people? And again, I guess that's up to an individual, but I can show you hundreds of emails from people saying I brought them back to the creator. So I think I'm doing more work there than most, right? Most people can't say, oh, I brought a hundred people or something to the creator. So I think that yeah, that's, and- you know, that's a benefit. And then if you tell people, where did I read it? I think it was Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle was saying that you can either use religion for one of two reasons. You can use it for uh, service to self or service to God. And if you are somebody who says, my religion is correct, you're not following my religion, you have to believe what I do, uh, you're going to go to hell if you don't believe what I do, I'm the cho- you know, I'm the good person, I've already accepted Jesus, that that person is using religion for service to self, because there's nothing in that conversation that is beneficial to God, right? Nothing. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're gloating about yourself, you're saying my religion is right, you're going to go to hell, you're now judging somebody. Taking an authority or a high ground. Right. You're totally doing the opposite of what the truth would be the truth of what you should be doing is creating service to God by getting people close to a point where they take off from there on their own. It's never a matter of people have to follow you, do exactly what you do, believe exactly what you believe. It's that some go astray, they become atheists. And if you can bring them back and let them see that, oh, wait, maybe I do believe that because I was upset at the church. I went and found science. Oh, Jaron is right. It is kind of like a religion. And then from there, they can find their way back. Now, if from there they go to Christianity, that's on them. That's their, their business, right? I'm not going to stop somebody from that. Um, yeah, and it's, it's their own choosing to do so. It makes correct. it a more genuine, their, their true free will feeling that they say, okay, I was able to choose. I wasn't forced. There's no like fear-driven um, right. thing. It's, it's a free choice, and that's what makes it genuine. Part of why correct. I think we're given free will is to genuinely choose to want to follow the creator and, and where people are at. I mean, well, it's like uh, people want, people want there to be a book, right? They want there to be an instruction guide. And I get that. It would make things easier. But I also think you really can't determine from a group of people who's a really good person. If you give them the answers to the test like that, if you tell somebody, Hey, uh, if you don't murder anybody, um, at the end of your life, you'll get all these riches, right? Well, you could literally have people that want to murder every day who just choose not to, because they want to be uh, they want to get this gold at the end of their life. Well, that's not a good person. Just because the person chose not to kill because they're going to get a reward, that's not. So I believe that the way that it's being done is way better. I think it's way, it's infinitely more impressive of God to give us nothing other than that inborn voice that kind of leads you, but kind of doesn't. You have free will. You can go against that voice. You can go with that voice. And then from there, um, I believe that the people that are able to navigate, stay away from the lies create their own beliefs off of what they see and what they've been shown. Uh, those are the people that in my mind um, will be rewarded in the end. But again, I'm basing that off nothing. I, I don't have the rules to the game have not been put on paper. So 
to me, I think that uh, that's one of the greatest things about this is that really it is a testing ground to see the cream rise to the, to the top, you know? Yeah. And that, I mean, there is, uh, I think there's a lot of, of truth in, in what you're saying. I am uh, a little bit curious. I'd like to ask you. Sure. Um, so you say like if you, uh, and you had said it in your uh, creed that if uh, you are a good person and you're able to kind of escape the, the matrix of lies, you'll be rewarded. Um, I don't know if that's with like a type of heaven or not in its own of itself uh, uh, that people can be. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I'd say, I don't, I mean, you, I would never be able to know that cause I haven't been to the afterlife, but my assumption would be everyone can't be judged or can't have the same result, right? It can't be that you can kill five people here or you can kill nobody and be a good person. And those two people have the same end result. I just don't think that that's a uh, part of this. I think it, it wouldn't be that way. So I think it has to be that there's some incentive, which we don't know what that incentive is, but there's some thing to strive for if you are a good person. So what that might be would not be something like heaven. It would be more like another plane of existence. I've thought about it before. Like, could it be that in the next life we remember our past lives so that what you do is you have this life here where nobody remembers their past life. Everybody goes through the motions. Some people pass, some people don't, but the people who move on would then be in a world where all the people that are there are good because they've gone through this trial and they remember their past lives. So they remember this life. And so they remember things that they did and they, that would be a much better world. You'd be going into that already with good people there. The people who passed this life are now moving on to that one. So, you know, another plane of existence, cause the idea of heaven just doesn't jive uh, with me. It doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know what people would do there. Then I've been told that it's not really me that, cause if I said, well, what if my mom went to hell when I get to heaven, that's going to suck. And they're like, Oh no, you wouldn't know. Like, how would I not know? Oh, well, they put a fake one up there. Like, a fake mom? What are you talking? You know, that, that's not the answer. The other answer is, well, you won't have family in heaven. It's like, what do you mean? It wouldn't. I wouldn't remember who my family was. It was just here. Well, I think the Bible does say something about your family. Uh, if you accept uh, and believe on Jesus, that your family is also kind of uh, through grace, uh, it's extended to them. Um, oh, you mean for them? But to go I to also heaven? I do think that heaven will only be able to consist of of good people um like they're if someone is continuously thinking about you know killing someone or doing something like that um right and whether they do or don't but like if they're like if i just have the opportunity i'll, I'll take it to do some great harm uh like those people can't be in heaven like going around always trying to kill people no um, no it's like i've said before too like if it cannot be what christians believe that you just have to believe in the sun. That's they actually believe that you could be a murderer, you could have raped a bunch of people, you're in jail, you're being a, a jerk there, but on your final day, you pray to Jesus and say you accept him and you accept God. They say that that person goes to heaven. Whereas somebody like me well, who's trying to do good but won't say that on my final day is would go to hell. What a joke that would be to have somebody who's raped and killed walking around with God being like, "Yeah, I accepted Jesus at the end and you are in hell because you didn't." There's just no way that can be true in my mind. And, and I, I, I think so. Like what I would say to that would be like, I think if you were a good person, uh, maybe when you die, you're going to, uh, right before you die in an instant, uh, God will be able to be able to tell your heart and say, if this person had a, a, a an equal opportunity access, uh, like no bias or, or past experiences. And they were told about the true Christ, uh, that they would have accepted Jesus. And so maybe that good person, whether they consciously like know it or not, or are in complete control of it, I think that they, God will, will judge their heart. But I also think as far as like someone who does, um, who does do evil, uh, their whole life. And then, uh, you know, they're, they're wicked, sinful and everything. And then at the very end, they accept Jesus. Uh, if they truly have, uh, if they accept Jesus with a full change of heart and ask for forgiveness, I think forgiveness is one of the most difficult things Absolutely. for any human to do. We're, we're very reserved when it comes to trying to forgive someone or even it's how many people never even consider forgiveness. And I, I think totally. why uh, the Bible says that is that if you accept on and have faith on Jesus is because what if you were that person who was evil all the time? And you were like, but wow, now I'm going to have to go to this, this horrible afterlife. Like you would want that, that chance to be forgiven and say, I, I, you know, like, and and if you're genuine about it, then this person who was maybe a murderer here 
in heaven, we don't know how they'll be because they're going to be, they will have genuinely changed their heart, have, have known evil and chosen good. And they, they could be a really fun person to hang around with or, you know, I don't know if there's going to be sports or anything like I, who, uh, heaven, <laughs> Well, I've said before, if be, we all go golfing, it's going to be pretty fun when we all shoot 18. Like who's going to shoot 19? Nobody's yeah, gonna right. <laughs> could just kick the <laughs> it'd ball. Be, it'd ball. be something else. And I, but I, I mean, like when I like heaven, I think my ultimate best idea, unconscious, conscious, subconscious, all put together, my best idea of heaven is only one, I don't know, 20 billionth or however many people have lived. Cause I think heaven's going to be like all of our best ideas put into one plus what the creator has in mind. And, and I just, I, I, yeah, that's a good thing. I, I mean, it's I kind of what, it. what I would picture the next existence being like the next plane of existence would be like that. It would be really for the ones who rose to the top, the best of the best and t- together with the creator doing creative things. Because I do think that we've been robbed of that ability to create or to know our full potential through vaccines, through lots of things. Right. And we're learning some of yeah. these things again, You're getting back to things like remote viewing. Um, I do want to try like that telekinesis, see if you can move things with your hands, some other things like that, just to uh, get an idea of um, if we've really been, we probably can do so much more. You know, I bet you the pyramids were built by people who knew about frequency and knew that you could uh, basically move blocks of any weight to any height that we've just been, that's been stolen from us. And uh, even if somebody did Plus find the mutations out mutations in our DNA, as we've been winding down, our, our, our DNA has become more and more corrupt. Yeah. Not mine. Mine's perfect, but I don't know about yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. no, but I mean, the hard part is, and I know it would be outside of time, but I've often said this, that let's say that we each got 10 seconds to speak to the creator when we, when the world's over, let's say the world ends, we each get 10 seconds that if we can imagine this line of 8 billion people each getting 10 seconds to talk to God, that's all you get 10 seconds real quick. Because that would take 31,000 years because you would have 10 seconds times 100 billion people who's how many they've said have lived, which is a trillion. And we know a trillion seconds is 31,000 years. So 31,000 years, it would take us just to have everybody talk to God for 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, but if if it's timeless and eternity, sure. I think that'd go by pretty quick. And I don't know. I think God would give us more than 10 seconds. I would hope uh, so. <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, but if you, I wonder if we could come up with what, would, what questions would you ask God? You only have 10 seconds. I would have to, it'd be hard. Go quickly. Uh, yeah, that's that's a, a stumper of a question. I right definitely, there. I'd have to sneak JFK in there. I want to know who killed JFK. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah. I'm gonna let you go. We got trouble in Tribune waiting for you. Okay, yeah. Hey, Jaron, thank you for the time. And uh, if I can, I just say one last thing. Of course, I'm not gonna hang up on you. Uh, I, I really so uh, my my fellow Christians out there, we really do have to have to take heed to what Jaron is saying. Don't shun criticism. Um, and, and he's he's giving you an open opportunity to dialogue. So uh, sharpen sharpen your iron um, and and be uh, gracious and and uh, merciful and really uh, and humble and uh, and kind and polite um, because uh, th- these are things that when we are talking to Jaron, as far as I can tell, I've talked to him a few times now. He seems like a, a good guy. Um, so, but there are people out there who are really struggling. So we can use this type of thing to, to help our, our bolster, our, our, our points, our contentions. And we have to also be ready to like for atheists and everything. Jaron understands the creator, special creation. Um, and, and you know, it, it's, it's within him. There's a lot of resonance. So we just have to, um, and I don't mean that in like a new agey kind of way or anything, but like, uh, we, we know the image that we're made in. And so I just, you know, be peaceful and, and joyful in, in talking about this because this is things a lot of people would shut us out, atheists and everything, which I don't want to hear it. So having this discussion, I think, goes a long way. Um, thank you uh, a lot, Jaron, for uh, for your time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope, uh, or yeah, just, uh, you know, stay well and everything. So. All right. Peace. <laughs> nice talking to you. Later. All right. Peace out. Troubling Tribune. Made it on to one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite shows. Nice. I love, I love the religious, uh, the religious broadcasts. Me too. Not all people do, but uh, some do, some don't. What are you gonna do? I'm just reading here that uh, when Jesus says, "Why are you calling me good? There is only one good. And it's God, my Father." Which is still funny because you still have people arguing that they're the same person. So. Oh yeah. He, I mean, he does go back and forth. There he does are, go a little uh, back and forth. That's why I think that it's definitely been garbled, grabbled, right? Like, I don't doubt that 
a lot of these words are not his and that they had to keep some in and they just kind of got convoluted because there's things that he even contradicts himself, right, uh, of, of saying things. So I like to think, though, that my my vision of what happened is I do tend to believe that there was a guy, Jesus. I know a lot of people don't believe that. Uh, but I wouldn't doubt that there was somebody who came along who saw the Old Testament God who said, this is ridiculous, and started talking to people instead of worrying about that, saying the God's inside you. I've come speaking on behalf of my Father. If you know me, you know him. Um, you know, to get through to God, you have to get through me. But he's talking about the ego. You got to get through me, not get through Jesus Christ. And then he just says some things like, you know, in the future, many people will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. Uh, don't be led astray. And they've taught us that that means many people will come in his name saying they are the Christ, which makes no sense. Why would that wouldn't even, nobody would believe that. What it means is that many people would come in his name, Christians, saying he is the Christ, which they all say that. And he says, do not be led astray. So I think people are just very confused. And this is what happens when you read a book of pen and paper and words on pen and paper, because it can be taken any way you want. You could give somebody a story, a written story. We could give it to 20 people and say, summarize this. Tell me exactly what it means. You're going to get 20 different renditions, 20 different um, uh, summaries. And so that should tell us that God would not choose that way. Whereas people might believe like, well, Jaron, the voice inside of us, there might be 20 different versions of that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it for a second. I think that we all have that same feeling inside of us. Now, many have shunned it. Many have turned it off. Many have ignored it. Many have gotten so frustrated with the idea of God that they become atheists and just swear up and down that there's no connection. Hey, that's fine by them, but th I know it was there, and they just uh, they lost it. They don't want it. And I think what happens when we bring up Flat Earth, the reason Globers lose their minds is because they've already shunned religion. They don't want anything to do with it. So when you're saying Flat Earth, what you're they don't care about the globe. What they care about is what you're implying is that they have to go back to believing in religion after everything that they've said, after everything that they've done. They don't want to be held accountable anymore. So I think that that has more to do with it than many people would know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of people are acting on motivations that they don't really uh, reveal or that they're not even you know revealed to themselves, You know, acting in the subconscious, as uh, Carl Jung um, put it multiple times. Um, that's why it's very important to always do self-analysis, always challenge your own beliefs. That's why this particular show right here is so very important if you're a Christian. I mean, just to be honest, as much as I love the limelight, you really shouldn't be spending too much time with me and with people who agree. You should be honestly getting more calls from the people who ha are opposition, who yeah. are, you know, claim to be experts in the field, who have read the Bible inside and out, who know the different translations. Um, that way you can skip past the arguments of, Oh, well, that's just a mistranslation, misunderstanding. Of course. You get right to the original stuff and be like, well, this is what it's saying, and uh, this isn't jiving. And I think anybody who does do that will find that, I mean, you can still believe in the Old Testament if you like, but, I mean, I don't really have a, I don't really see any real great reason to. And once you get through all of it and you realize there is no chance of a Savior, that it's all on you, and as soon as you relied on a Savior, you committed blasphemy, so you can't be forgiven for that. So if the Bible is really true, I mean, we are all Rude. We are all super screwed, um, and I don't think people realize that. But yeah, again, we're this... it's a trouble. If <laughs> if uh, Jesus isn't coming back, you, we've got some work to do. And unfortunately, there's so many Christians who will never hear that. They'll just never. Doesn't matter. I would guess that in if the world was still here in two thousand years, there will still be Christians still thinking Jesus is coming. And that four thousand years, if you said, "Why well, it's been four thousand years," they would be like, "It's a different time. They use God's time, not human time." Be like. Okay, well, if they're writing a Bible for us, I suggest next time they put it in human years, not God years. Yeah, and maybe put it in something like a, I don't know, maybe like a tablet that can't be morphed or changed. That's like what I said, like a golden, golden, what if it was a golden pages at the North Pole? We went there, and then what if it was written in a language that anybody who could read it, read it in their own language? That would be very divine to me. But even that, really even that wouldn't necessarily mean it was divine. Because again, maybe they... Some advanced civilization was here before, and this is their way of setting up this deception. So that's why you know that the it can't be that. It wouldn't be that. Would, God wouldn't even be able to put golden pages on a book that nobody could touch or they'd get zapped. Now, they could easily sell that to people as God's word. But again, those of us who have woken up to deceptions know to doubt everything until it's proven. Oh, yeah. Oftentimes, things that are, can be mistaken for divine or for magic is just yeah. science un Understood. Who says that? Does uh, was it Arthur C. Clarke has a quote? I'm terrible with remembering the names. I'm trying to get better for the trivia, but 
Uh, let's uh, see if it's in. We'll see how it goes. Arthur C. Clark and Magic and Science or something. I think he says like any. Well, maybe it's Sagan. Now I'm thinking about it. Uh, let me see. Maybe I've heard Sagan say it about him. Uh, science fiction. Arthur C. Clark says no. Clark's three laws. Oh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And that's a crazy quote, though, because it <laughs> it's basically saying like, and if we are significantly advanced now, and I would say that we are, I mean, again, not by the terms of we can fly to the stars, you know, trillions of miles away, but I'm saying to think of what we've just done in the last hundred years uh, with, you know, lighter than air flight and with, you know, I, I'll never understand communication theory. I, I've looked into it. I cannot, I, I think it has to be alien or something because I just can't grasp that men sat around and said, I think that we can take things we say and photographs and we can break them down into bits and then we can send them across the world in a faster than light tra or, you know, light speed travel. And then on the other end, they'll get reassembled correctly. I just can't imagine where they came up with this idea that we could send data that way, but That's maybe, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's crazy. But, uh, for him to say that is kind of like at this point, we're kind of at the place now where the magic and the real would just blend. So we, we you know, this is what we've already noticed, right? They can fake anything. So at this point, yeah, is, is space travel going to just mostly be, oh, it's their travel to space. It's fake for me. Yes, because they've never shown anything real. And so if we've seen them fake it all through the 60s, 70s, 80s, then it wouldn't surprise me if they still fake it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you got a track record, right? Yeah, um, I think it's pretty safe to bet on the track record in a lot of scenarios. Most cases, yep. I did want to take a, a few moments just to kind of completely, um, possibly demolish a few thought processes on what uh, it possibly means to be divine or to chemist on your that. clock. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so th this is something that you know I think about a lot when I hear these types of discussions, and when I, especially when I hear other people get on. Um, and of course, I don't hate anybody or disregard anybody's opinion. Everybody's entitled to that. And it sure would be boring if we had all the same one. Totally but agree. I do think it's it's funny that a lot of us are like arguing the source of mora of this morality um, when the fact is, is that it is just here. And in my opinion, the thing that we really should be figuring out is how the hell do the mechanics of the soul work? Because mm -hmm. almost everybody who agrees in religion agrees that there's some sort of spiritual body that inhabits the flesh. If you agree on that and you think that that's something that can, you can manipulate possibly, then why in the heck aren't you trying to do that? Right. And I know the answer. The reason is, is because most of the religions tell you not to, because they tell you it's evil. Right. Uh, but if you're a skeptic and you tend to think like, uh, like we do, I see it a lot like the gun argument that the Democrats make all the time. It's like, we have to get rid of the guns because the guns are so dangerous. Right. It's like, yeah, is it that it's so dangerous or is it so dangerous for you uh, right. in opposition to you? Um, so I think that uh, we have very powerful spiritual skill sets that we have, you know, been led away from generationally poisoned out of with uh, the medical field and with the diet. And I think that if certain changes are made, that people can kind of get back more towards the uh, the natural human, if you will. And let me tell you yeah. about my, my high school. So I went to an all boys Catholic high school Jesuit run. And they pushed you into one of two directions, religion or science. I didn't get it at the time. I was very confused. I was into girls and weed, so I didn't really care much about school. Looking back now and wondering, well, why did they do that? It still took me a while because it's like, oh, they want you in a belief system. Okay, I get it. They either want you in that belief system or that because they know what you're going to do and they can judge you or they can predict what you're going to do from there. But then I realized the reason they're pushing you there is because what do science and religion have in common? They both don't believe in manifestation. They don't believe in soul searching. They don't. So then I said, oh, that's what they're doing there. Because that's the only reason you would do that. You would put people in corners where you're like, okay, now if you're a believer in science or you're a believer in religion, you don't believe in the things that I'm starting to learn are true. Right. So I think that that's a big reason is that they're just moving you away from um, finding the real truth inside you. And if you are a religious believer or you're a science believer, the last place you look is inside yourself. Last place. You look outside for everything. You look at pastor, priest, uh, my my Bible, uh, what does you know, this guy say on YouTube? What does this guy say? This Bible scholar. Uh, I'm going to read this Bible book. I'm going to read this book that says that God is real. And again, you are always outsourcing your truth, and that cannot be by design either. 
Oh, yeah. I actually think that there's a good chance that it really doesn't matter if you know how much is true or not. Um, it might just be a specific muscle memory that you figure out, um, yeah. like meditation or something like that. And it might also be true that we all come back continuously. It's just that we don't always remember it. Um, so, but again, that's just my opinion, speculation station, right? Um, it might be true that, you know, what you said is completely correct, that there's another plane of existence entirely that you go to. Um, the only issue that I have with that is that you really can't have, a, or it's hard to imagine an afterlife of any kind without an after afterlife and then right. an after after afterlife. Well, so I do think that probably, and I guess it would be one of two things and I've gone back and forth. I can't decide which one either. There is some sort of not a competition, but maybe some people get to become gods. I don't know. That's just something that I could see being handed out if the right people can. And then you go and you can create worlds outside of time as well, just like God created this world. That's just one idea. The other idea would be that we all end up at source. That the, the If we were all God and we were split into little bits, that the ultimate goal would be to get back to that eternal bliss, that all-knowingness, which would be returning your peace to the Creator. It, really interesting point on uh, on what you just said. Um, basically those two points that you just made, those two possibilities are the two dividing schools of thought in occultism of what you can do. Um, oh, really? One, yeah. One is considered what a lot of people would consider white magic. It's where you're, you're just doing a lot of self-discovery. You're trying to, the main goal of it is to connect back with source as soon as possible. And then you have, um, dark magic or which a lot of people have a misconception about. Um, they think that it's always used for evil, but it's, it's actually not. But um, the whole concept behind it is that you're trying to isolate your ego to the point that you can um, become a god and not necessarily have to reincarnate. So, um, yes, really yes, say, yes. Thank you very yes, much. Yes. Very cool. What does that say? Kim Berlina, a.k.a. Wick, th th Wicked Good Witch, a.k.a. Kim Renee. <laughs> I couldn't. Re I was reading the name. I didn't even get to the super chat. <laughs> okay, go ahead. They always go so fast. I haven't figured out how to make them go. Longer. I know. I emailed them and asked them too because there's no, no, it doesn't tell you how to add seconds to it or anything. Yeah. But that, <laughs> in my opinion, those, uh, those two things are, are, they are completely different, but they're not necessarily have anything to do with what's good or what's evil. Um, and I tend to lean towards the, um, towards the black side, towards the darker side where you can isolate your ego because I, I think of it like the memory card. Um, I sure would hate to work really, really hard on this video game character uh, just to have to reset it at the end. Right. Um, but not everybody feels that way. Some people actually, you know, do want to do are the type of players that go through multiple different characters and they're OK with letting things go. And, right. you know, maybe that's part of my own personal journey. Who knows? But Yeah, and I don't know. I, I, I guess it, it to me, it doesn't matter to worry about it here. Right. It's kind of, you know, it's just one of those things where I don't think you're going to get to the bottom of it. So to me, again, the more impressive thing is to do the things because you're a good person. So it doesn't matter. You're not doing it because you get a, a reward. You're not doing it because you're getting some part of the afterlife or whatever. You're doing it because it's better than being a dirtbag. So, which a lot of people are anyway. All right. I'm gonna let you go. Or do you have something else? Go, go, did I not give you enough time? No, um, I'm actually good. My son just came in, so I'm going to hop on off. All right. How old's I he? appreciate you having me on. I'll be watching in the uh, chat. How old's your boy? Uh, he is serious. He <laughs> he's a little shy. <laughs> he is, uh, he's going on four. Okay. Maybe four in April. And then I have another one. Um, he's going on a year. Okay. So Good. We got a, we and got they're a full house. all unvaxxed and, and healthy as can be. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Well, I wish I could say, uh, completely unvaxxed for my three year old, but we messed up a little bit in the beginning. Hey, I have, started, I have a 23 year old same way. We, uh, we actually stopped, uh, stopped at the one year, um, when I was able to, you know, finally fully prove out the, the case. Um, I basically went into the doctors, um, with my girl and I just asked them the questions, you know, what's in it, right. where are the studies? Uh, do you have anything you can show me? Have and you watched uh, space busters recent video, um, on viruses, on all that stuff? You gotta watch. I love, I love space busters. They have a really good oh, series. So good. Germany. Yeah. If you watch, yeah. on Germany, Yeah. If you watch the most recent one, I, I just loved it. There was, they had some girl talking, some guy talking. It was just so much good information, and I totally agree with them. I totally agree with uh, what they're reaching, and, and everything's revealing that in my life, and it feels so much better. My wife and I both don't feel anymore like there's germs flying around that are going to jump in my mouth. It just none of that makes sense now. You know, you just think about it, you're like, wait a second, what? 
I mean, it makes total sense that you're going through seasonal, yeah. uh, you know, seasonal detoxes. And if there was germs of, out there trying to get us or like viruses, then there would be nothing here. How the hell? Right. I mean, we how did we get by without Fauci? I mean, come on. I mean, it's, the human race just went for all these years and then the oh, coronavirus is going to take us out. Come on, give me a break. Thousands, and we were eating dirt and you know, and un <laughs> know just, uncooked animals and right. all kinds of crazy stuff. Bathing um, in filth water. Point, uh, just to back up that point on the uh, on the vaccines being the right call, not doing that. Um, my second son, we didn't do any of the vaccines. I didn't let him poke him with a needle or anything when he uh, came out of the womb. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, drug free birth and all that. Um, and when I brought him home from the hospital, everybody in my house was sick as a dog like sneezing, coughing, hacking. And my dad, like we didn't realize that my dad was sick and he literally held, <laughs> held this newborn in his arms, like face to face. And he was super sick the next day. And I was sick and Jessica was sick. The baby's fine. Even Riker was sick, but yeah, the baby was completely and utterly fine. And I was like, well, that's proof, you know, because obviously if it was a bug and he doesn't have an immune system, right. he'd be wrecked right now. But because it's terrain theory and he hasn't taken in any toxins in his whole entire life, he right. has nothing to detox. So, And it was amazing. I mean, you talk about perfect. It was um, last year sometime my wife got sick, um, you know, she felt real run down. She, you know, take the baby. I'm going to go lay in bed. So for like three days, it was basically she was in bed, not feeling well. And then right the day that she was feeling better, she's like, I'll take Mavi today. Is like the right when she took Mavi out of my hands, it was like, oh, man, I don't feel very good. And then I went yep. and was sick for three days. It was unbelievable. It was like, and what would have happened if we both were sick at the same time? It would have been, I don't know what we would have done. We, because we would have had the baby. He was barely like one. So just like perfect, almost like our bodies did that in sync, kind of got rid of the toxins at the same time. And we both just were tired for three days and then came out of it. And you're, it's so much better to be sick when you're not thinking like you're dying. It's more, your body's going through its normal process of rejuvenating you and getting healthier. All right. I'm going to let you go. Much love to you. Peace. Okay, that was Troubling Tribune. He's got, what What day is your your Tuesday? You guys' uh, trivia? Uh, yeah, so okay. it's going to be the 31st. We don't have the time set just yet, gotcha. but uh, we're, we're really excited for it. It's going to be for some, you know, trying to raise some money for some charity. I like it. So definitely come on out. I've been studying up. Uh -oh. um, I'm actually really bad with names and with, tri with trivia in general. It's really funny. Let so me give you one here. Uh, is who is the who is the guy that did the Vegas shooting? <laughs> you have more studying to do, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing uh, pretty much from now until then. So I'm going to be studying real hard. Hopefully, I can retain some shit. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. I'll All be right. in the chat. Take it easy. Okay, let's see if we got any phone calls, and then we will. Uh, if not, I'll read the chat. Let's see here where we've got the, where is my thumbnail? There. All right. Move that over. And let's see if there's anybody on the phones. Nobody. Phone lines are open. 888-698-3528. That's 888-698-FLAT or the speaker's corner. Let's go over here to the chat and see what's good. Now, I don't know how these work. Do I press them and then they go on the screen? Let's see. Let's go here. No, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? One second. I'm going to make sure this fits. So I can put the one on the screen. I don't even have the chat thing here. It's called YT chat. There it is. Wait, YT chat. Okay. Por que no? Let's try this way. I wonder why that's not to do that today. Oops. Control V. Oh, that's it. All right, now we'll get it on there. I hope. All right, cool. I'll make that a little bigger, and we'll get rid of these things. Okay, okay. Let's get rid of the phone number. And everything else is clean. All right, good. All right, uh, let's go through the chat. Let's go through. Okay, so we got just join. Do questions have to be about God-related? No, it can be whatever you want. For today, you can do whatever you want. We've got... 30 minutes left to go. We've got uh, the terrible ideas some humans have come up with to describe the crater. What about the actual crater? Thoughts on that? Uh, well, the actual, I mean, again, I don't think of the crater as a personable thing like that, I guess. Uh, 
There is no, I don't think there's a God that's sitting above watching, that can interject, that can stop a child from running in front of a car, that God is experiencing everything with us, within us. And so this is why, you know, does God ever save people from, well, yes, because God is acting within us. But one thing I was going to say about Troubling Tribune real quick, that I feel like you, as far as the black magic, white magic thing, my whole thing is you can never take away somebody else's free will. Even an attempt at that would be, you know, so if you try and pray for a girl to like you, or what you're asking that is you're asking God to interject in that person's free will and make them want to like you. No, you can't, that's not a, not a smart thing to pray for. Um, if you pray for strength, uh, give me humility, pray for those kind of things. Yes, you're not affecting anybody's free will but your own, and I believe that God will help you on those. But to try and save people from like getting sick, people are always like, oh, we prayed and my grandma got better. It's like, yeah, well, everybody prays and their grandma's sick, and they're, half the time the grandma dies. So what do you do? All right, let's go with uh, just testing the question box. Are you doing awesome? Absolutely, very much so. Why isn't anyone asking questions? Dave Hinkle, thank you for that question. Very good. Uh, did Jesus say he was the way, the truth, and the life, or the light? Well, I always say this. We don't know what Jesus said ever. So men say Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the light, I believe. Um, is the, If the sun is a flaming ball of burning gas, how can plants grow? Correct. Using a fireball sun, indoor plants wilt when they're next to a fire, but plants thrive when they're under an electricity-powered light. Very true, Ethan W0406. However, I don't, you should probably get a dictionary and look up what questions mean. Questions. Okay. Uh, they were master alchemists. They could make stone of marble, normal concrete, and stones of enormous size just by mixing of things with water. How else can you explain statues of rope? Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And who did I listen to the other day that was like Eddie Griffin was talking about how they made the pyramids and he was saying that the pyramids are actually diamonds. I was really weird at what he was describing, but he's basically saying like you make this big hill and then you have it, you keep going down the hill, pushing the sand down the side. I thought it was pretty crazy. Um, but I do think like true, you know, like they have that light concrete that can be done all with water. Maybe, maybe. Uh, do you think it's 2023 or 1023? I would guess it's more in the 1023 range. It might even down even be too high as far as, but again, it always goes back to how many times we've been reset that I can never determine. So I think this group of humans has not been here very long. I think that a lot of the writings have been rewritten. Everything from BC has been rewritten. We don't have any evidence of that stuff. It's just a story, a likely story, uh, that they like to tell and people like to believe. Uh, why wouldn't God just speak to us or provide text? God preaches to not trust man, but then uses man to write his word. What the hell? Yeah, that's why he would not use text, right? And why he also, again, speak to us is a little bit weird because if we had somebody come into our house right now, I was like, God just told me this and this, we would all say, get out, you're a crazy person. So probably not a good thing to have God speak to you either. But I think that that feeling inside is one that we all recognize. We know if we hurt somebody, if we lie to somebody, that that feeling inside you, it, we feel that, you know? Why is this thing still going? Um, so, was that it? Oh, I guess that's all the questions. Okay. Um, oh, we got Andrew over here. Andrew, welcome to Le Show. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Anytime. Hopefully my audio is okay. It's very loud, very bassy, you sound good. Okay, well, I'll move the microphone a little bit away. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a lot of religious experiences that are pretty much in line with your own. Okay. And I have a story I'm going to tell real quick, but I don't want to get it too convoluted. I'll just tell you that I met Kent Hovind. I'm sorry, I, I was in his house. Okay. I was in Pensacola, Florida for my naval air training in 2002, roughly. And a guy basically jumped out of the bushes with a Bible in front of me and I was coming out of the chow hall with, you know, Sunday morning saying, Hey, do you want to get some free lunch? And I was like, yeah, sure. Free lunch. Right. So we went to the Bible service or the church service, whatever it was, whatever you call it. And then after that, it was another half an hour drive over to the house where the church was going to be. I'm sorry. The, the lunch was going to be. So we went there, we had some lunch, but in the meantime, the wife 
of the of Kent Hovind uh-huh. put on a video for us saying, "Oh yeah, this is my husband. He's the pastor or whatever it was called of that church." And we sat down, we watched it. It was like a half an hour long, and I was just getting completely bored. <laughs> It, it started getting really, really creepy to the point where I was like, when we walked in the house, there was just these different Bible verses that were printed out and taped all over every single refrigerator, every single cabinet. That's every- weird. Yeah, it was really weird. So I basically sold, told them that I had to leave early because I had to go on watch, even though I didn't have to. I, so I, I fucking lied to them. So anyways... That was my little experience with Kent Hovind, even though I didn't know who he was. <laughs> but then later on, I saw him on YouTube, and I was like, oh my god, I was at that guy's house. Anyways, quick little story for that. Okay. So, with all these people that are completely towards being Christian or Buddhist or any other thing like that, there are the five major religions. Then there's also the other two. So... Every single one of them also thinks that they're correct. So which one is correct? Or can we just stay in the middle and just understand that creation is real and that we're here for a purpose? Yeah, I think it's so obvious that we all, that everybody worships the same God. And that's what tells me that each person does have that inborn spirit inside them. They do go searching for him, but you are a product of your own society or culture, right? So each culture came up with basically their own idea of God, and then when they brought new children into the world, they taught those children to worship that God. So this is why the Indians have all their crazy gods and Rakesh and all, you know, uh, Sheba and all these ones. And then you've got the Japanese and their gods and Shinto and, the, you know, Buddha, and you've got the Russian with the Russian Orthodox. I mean, it's all people worshiping the same God. They just are so dumb they can't get out of each other's way. And they are responsible for a majority of the of the wars and deaths in this world. And that's sad. That's sad to say. That's how you know it cannot be from God. I mean, imagine that as hard of a time as we give atheists, they're not the ones out starting wars against others. I mean, as far as like Muslims versus Christians or Jews versus Palestinians. It's, it, it, that is a lot of religious, my God's better than your God. My God gave me permission to do this. I don't know if you guys saw the video I showed the other day of these Jewish guys saying basically that um, we're all the, the evil ones and that God said to wipe us from the planet. And I mean, it's just ridiculous that there's people like that. I mean, can you imagine? Think of how, so like, if people didn't have this idea of God, they would never think to themselves, oh, we've got to go wipe those people off the face of the earth. It's their belief in God that has given them the justification to think that that's okay to say. And I've heard Christians say it too. I've heard Christians say it all the time that they think certain uh, people should be executed or that there should be righteous judgment on them or that, uh, and it's just, the only reason they feel that way is because they the Bible. The Bible describes a very vengeful, murderous, punishing God, and so people then feel like it's okay for them to be the same. So not a very, if you look at how far the apple falls from the tree, um, you know, you would think that people would recognize that the wickedness that we see in a lot of people. I mean, we've got made by rim jobs saying world peace is satanic. The, the, the thought that somebody considers themselves holy or of God or religious, but they say world peace is satanic. Why? Because the book doesn't mention world peace. The book says that the world goes to hell and then Jesus comes back and saves it. So these brain dead people think that's a, a good thing to say. And they will be, a. Uh, They'll be surprised when they get to the end. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and the other problem I have with religion is that if you talk to someone that's Christian and say, well, what about Abraham? Or what about Buddha? They're going to just completely deny the fact that that's even possible. It's uh, it's a major issue when it comes to this belief system that people have been brought into based on the historical relevance of basically history. Yeah, I think a very fair thing to do would be if you have children to not raise them in your religion. It's not it's not fair, right? You have to um like with Mavi what we're going to do is just teach him that everybody should be treated yes like a yes, piece of the creator. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get it. Uh thank you very much Charlie. Says, "Oops, my bad." And now we return back to the journalism show. Cheers. Thank you. 
<laughs> Appreciate that, Charlie. Um, now you made me lose my train of thought. What was I saying? I don't remember. Anyway, go ahead. It must not have been important. <laughs> I, I kind of lost my train of thought as well. But the thing about it is if you talk to a Jew or a Muslim or anyone in any other faith, um, by the way, if people aren't aware of this, the oldest religion is Hinduism, and mm -hmm. they have the most gods. Right. And the one my, I have a really good buddy who's Hindu. I've been talking to this about. And he prays to Lord Shiva. So if I ask him, and I did, I had a long conversation with him about it. I said, what does Hinduism say about Jesus? He said, nothing. They don't even recognize it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how many religions actually recognize Jesus Christ? So before Christianity came along, everybody was wrong. And then all of a sudden there was this, this one particular entity right. that came down. Why did God wait so long to actually reveal himself? Yeah, right. I mean, why didn't... Uh, and I don't mean to bring up Eric DeBay, because I know you don't like him very much. You guys have a... I don't mind Eric DeBay. Okay, well. Anyways, he brings up some really good points when it comes to religion and spirituality and stuff like that. And he brings up the point of how the serpent staff and different things... I don't know. I don't get into it very much. But anyways, I don't want to take up too much more time. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. And we will uh, talk to you next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I see some questions over here, but I did want to read one part here because this is where I see the deception in the Bible. So just was looking through some pages. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 12 here. And the title of the chapter is Short-Lived Prosperity of the Wicked. So imagine you're the elite. You're going to want all the money. You're going to want all the power. You're going to act in wicked ways. So that's what you want to do. So the Bible is perfect for you. The Bible is the best tool of the elite that there has ever been. Because here where it talks about the short-lived prosperity of the wicked, we just know that that's a lie. Okay, so we can know that that's a lie. Because many of the of the wicked prosper their whole lives. They're always rich. When have we heard stories about, oh, there was Warren Buffett, and he was rich and powerful, and then all of a sudden when he turned 60, he lost all his money. No, because once people get wealth, they can then protect themselves from uh, you know, improper whatever it is, you know, lawsuits, or they can protect themselves from being arrested. And so really the wicked do prosper here. So when you see a chapter called short-lived prosperity of the wicked, you know, well, okay, but you better be talking about now again. And if somebody comes and promises you heaven or something that you can't see, then we have to recognize that the most likely thing is that that's a deception. So let me read this real quick. Uh, chapter 12. Thou indeed, O Lord, are just. If I plead with thee, but yet I will speak what is just to thee. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why is it well within them to that transgress and do wickedly? Thou hast planted them, and they have taken root. They prosper, and they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. And thou, O Lord, has known me. You have seen me. I have proved my heart with thee. Gather them together as sheep for a sacrifice, and prepare them for the day of slaughter. So he's basically saying, look, I'm good. I'm great. I do all the things that you want me to do, and I don't prosper. But the elite, the wicked, they're prospering. Why is it that way? And how long shall the land mourn and the herb of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts of them that dwell therein, the beasts of the birds are consumed because they have said, he shall not see our last end. If thou has been wearied with running with footmen, how can thou contend with horses? And if thou has been secure in a land of peace, what will thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? For even thy brethren and the house of thy father, even they have fought against thee and have cried after thee with full voice. Believe them not when they speak good things of thee. I have forsaken my house. I have left my inheritance. I have given my dear soul into the hand of her enemies. My inheritance is become to me as a lion in the wood. It has cried out against me. Therefore have I hated it. It is my inheritance to me that I speckled as a speckled bird. It is as a bird dried throughout. I should have read this first. Is there, we go through a bunch of nonsense. Where's going to get to the part? Uh, okay, we'll go a little bit further down. They have sown wheat and reaped thorns. They have received an inheritance, and it shall not profit them. You shall be ashamed of your fruits because of the fierce wrath of the Lord. Thus said the Lord against all my wicked neighbors that touch the inheritance that I have shared out of my people of Israel. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land, and I will pluck the house of Judah 
out of the midst of them. And when I shall have plucked them out, I will return and have mercy on them, and I will bring them back, every man to its inheritance and every man to, into his land. And it shall come to pass that if they will be taught and will learn the ways of the Lord, I'm sorry, learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, the Lord liveth, and they have taught my people to swear by Baal, that they shall be built up in the midst of my people. But if they will not hear, I will utterly pick, pluck them out and destroy that nation, said the Lord. So again, I mean, these are false threats, false promises, and we're smart enough to recognize it. We can recognize that this is just a deception. It's meant to keep you. Once you read that, you're like, oh, well, yeah, I got to make sure I'm not wicked. I got to do what the Lord says. And then you become exactly who they want you to be. Um, so to me, it's just there would be some sign of things and everything that's being said. Why does everything Jesus says and why does everything all these people say benefit the elite? When Jesus says there should be wars and rumors of wars, these things must happen before I come back. That is the perfect line for the elite. If they want you to be like Jesus, he can't set a date that he'll be back. Then people would wait for that date. So, and you can't say, he can't say, I'll be back soon and life will be good until that. No. He, so he says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. Why? Because there's always that. So this is how the elite make money. This is how the elite, you know, reset timelines is through wars. So by having Jesus say there'll be wars and rumors of wars, these things must happen. It means for however many thousands of years this goes on, that people will always be okay with wars going on. They'll be okay with war, pestilence and famine and anything, because Jesus said these things must happen before I come back. So again, would Jesus ever say that? No. Why would he say that? Why not tell people, hey, you can bring heaven to earth. You can uh, defeat the wicked. You can end the the disgusting nature of, of those that go against God. Instead, he just kind of said, let wicked be wicked, let evil be evil. These things must happen. I'm coming soon. And so it's been 2,000 years. It is okay now. You're not blaspheming to say it's been too long. And you guys can't even say that. Christians can't even say that. They're like, no, well, you know, maybe it means uh, in God years or something. No, he said, I'll be back quickly. We human beings live here for like 80 years. So quickly, by nobody's standards, is 2,000. Okay, it's not even a thousand if that's the only timeline it's been. According to Fomenko, Jesus was hung on a cross in the year 1100 something. Um, let's check the chat real quick over here. Getting close to the time. I've got 10 minutes. Okay, we got off grid woodsman. Oh, or did we already do that one? Yeah, we read that one. Okay, we've got Faye Clegg says, Can you please share some facts on the Arctic tern bird? They prove flat earth. I believe black and white animals, i.e. orca, penguins, and tern, have something to tell us with migration patterns. I have no idea. You, know, you got to give me a little bit of study time on that one. So it's the Arctic tern bird. So is, don't these animals just use magnetics to get around? Uh, tern bird. I've never even heard of such thing. Uh, no call still. If anybody wants to call it, 888-698-FLAT. We've only got a couple minutes left. 10 minutes. You guys did well. At least we got a couple cars, a couple callers. Uh, Arctic turn. And get your questions in. If you're on the YouTube chat, you've got another few moments. If you're on Rockfin, I'll be over there in a second. Uh, Arctic turn bird. There we go. It's a very pretty bird. Uh, what is special about the Arctic turn? A small, slender, gray and white bird with angular wings. It is known for its yearly long migration. It travels from its Arctic breeding grounds in Antarctica, where it enjoys the Antarctic summer, covering around 25,000 miles. Breeding birds sport a full black cap, short red legs, and a red bill. Wait, it travels from its Arctic breeding grounds to Antarctica, where it enjoys... It, they fly all the way from north to south? Okay. Um... God, that'd be awesome. You could put a little tracker on there, but again, they go by the GPS, so it doesn't really work. Uh, but I will look into that. That's a cool thing. They go all the way down there, huh? They just go where the summer is. I think some civilizations might have done that too, but they'd be gone. They would be far out. They're not coming back here. Not coming back here. The ends of the earth. So it says this one. The Arctic tern is a water-loving bird that hatches during summer in the Arctic Circle. The northernmost part of the northern hemisphere during the unbearably cold, dark Arctic winter, 
The Arctic Turn flies south following the summer season all the way to the Antarctic Circle on the other side of the Earth. Because Arctic Turns do not fly in a straight line, the distance they fly every year is even longer than the approximately 30,000 kilometer from Arctic Circle to Antarctic Circle. What? It says longer than the approximately 30,000 kilometer, 18,000 miles. It's not 18,000 miles, it'd be 12,500. From Arctic Circle to Arctic Circle, from Arctic Circle to Arctic Circle would be way less than 12,500. Be like 8,000. Where are they getting 18? This makes the Arctic Terns migration one of the longest of any animal on Earth. I do want to look into these guys. Why migrate? Where do they get the 18,000 number from? Because we could just, or are they talking about round trip? Because that would be about, it would be about that round trip if they're counting that. Um, okay. Anybody else questions? Let's see. Nope, not there. All right, I'm going to shut off the phones. I don't like having everything on. Nobody's on the phones. Let me check. Uh, we're online. Oh, I already closed it. All right, we're going to lose the phones. Later. We still have StreamYard open for another moment. And okay, I'm going to go check out Rockfin. See who's over there. Who's all there? Who's in the house? Who is in the house? Uh, Rockfin. And so tomorrow we have Globebusters. It'll either be on my channel or back on Globebusters. I think Bob's going to be back tomorrow, but it could be another week he needs. So we will find that out in the morning. And let's go to the chat. Let's go to the chat. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'm talking to myself now. Okay, let's do that. All right, we've got 25 bucks tips. Thank you very much. Let's go to tip line and see what we got. We got Jason Bowles. Jason, you are very uh, awesome. Uh, I'm very thankful for you for doing that every single show, it seems. And Ashley in the house. Ashley, contributing to your first show. Uh, nice read. Did you like it? Thank you. I appreciate that. I do appreciate it. It is a little bit because you, you watch now. There'll be a video done by Prebrain and there'll be a video done by everybody saying Jerem wants to be God and look how dumb his thing is. And really what it is is it's just them admitting that they're testicles are the size of little marbles and they are very jealous of another person that's able to lay out a creed and say this is what i believe and it's nothing that anybody else believes my beliefs there are my truly my own and those guys uh impress me so little that they believe men that's it they believe men whatever men say about the bible that's what they believe whatever their pastor says about a verse that's what they believe whatever a pastor says about a certain uh theory that's what they believe they don't have any of their own uh, unique thoughts, at which point you're just basically a NPC at that point. Let's go with uh, Marine. Whoops, I didn't see your name right. Marine Sith Lord says, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the crater Earth theory. The moon craters do match the constellations. The moon craters do match the constellations? Uh, where's a good video I could watch on that? I, I, I don't really understand the whole idea of the Earth being bigger and still a sphere, though, but because that's just kind of ridiculous. Can you... Uh, possibly tell me a channel or a video where I could hear because I've never even seen that the moon craters match the constellations yeah I don't know of a good channel that I've really had that does a good job of explaining that whole moon theory um, I, don't, I guess I don't get it so that's my answer I know it's not much sorry why are the comparisons for scripture Christians speaking pints and not about the scripture itself Wait, why are the comparisons for Scripture Christian speaking points and not about the Scripture itself? What do you mean? Uh, I don't think I get what you're saying. So why are the comparisons? What, who's comparing what, compares, comparing what in Scripture? So you're saying, so I'm comparing, why are the comparisons for Scripture Christian speaking points and not about the Scripture itself? I have no idea what you mean. Yeah, I mean, everything I try and read is about Scripture itself in the fact that it's not what you would expect from a creator. The Bible is, is, I mean, it's got some good things in it, but if you're just being honest, and I realize that Christians can't be honest about this, the book is terrible. It's repetitive. It's barely, maybe once every couple pages, you're going to get something of substance. It's like, wow, that's really well said. But if you read it thinking that it's God-written, if you're handed it as a child, and this is why the Jesuits say, give me a child up to the age of seven, and I'll give you, um, you know, a Jesuit for life is because they can, they know the psyche. Within those seven years, you can basically become that belief system. So, for a lot of us, we were given the Bible at a young age and told it's the book of God. 
So as we read it, you read it with this reverence of like, oh, it's God's word. And so you allow the nonsense that's in there. You allow the repetitiveness. You remember, I mean, there's some chapters that are unbearable. It's like the same thing over and over again. Go to Leviticus. All the chapters are like identical. And bring this animal in and bring this animal in, drip this blood and do that blood and do this curtain. And it's just over and over and over again. That's not God's work. It, I, I, I know it's not good to think about yourself as God, but I do picture myself, if I was God, I'd be so disappointed in the people here. So they blame him for murders. They blame him for deaths. They blame him for the flood. They blame him for killing people on the Sabbath. They blame him for killing the firstborn of all the Egyptians. And it's like nobody's ever seen any evidence of that, yet all the Christians believe it. I believe it. I believe it. it's like I created this world, and they're now thinking that I'm going around and killing people, flooding the world, that I'm telling Noah to put two of each animal on his boat. Like, that's embarrassing to God. It's got to be embarrassing. It's not like he's up there like, yes, they believe in the stories that they've never seen in their life, the fantastical stories of Jonah and a whale and Jesus walking on water and I'm rising from the dead. I'm so happy that my little creations believe something that goes completely against everything they've ever seen. But it can't be true. It can't be true. There's no way that God depends or is hoping that you believe things that you cannot verify to be true, especially when the Bible says, prove all things. So I'm still waiting for you to prove that man can rise from the dead, that man can walk on water, that man can be born of a virgin, that a man can live in a whale, that a donkey can talk, that a snake can talk. Lots of things that we need to work out uh, if we're going to prove all things. We've got uh, the points of Scripture you brought up. Up were in regards to what Christians believe, not in regards to what the Scripture says. Not saying this as a Christian. Uh, yeah, you'd have to tell me which verse particularly. Um, but I, this is the problem, is that the Scriptures are one thing. They're just text on paper. Again, if we gave 20 pages to 20 people, or the same page to 20 people, each one would have a different outlook on that page, a different summary. And that tells you why... Um, so when I'm reading the Bible, I don't know, I don't really understand, like, read it, if you read it word for word for word, it's even worse. At least Christians are trying to kind of make rational sense out of it. I say, oh, well, what's meant is this, what's meant... So to me, it just cannot be possible that God put me here, and he's like, all right, Jaron, what I want you to do, find somebody who will teach you my word from the Bible. Like, what, does that make sense? That's what God wants from us, is to find some other man to teach us? No. God would want you, if they did write the book, to read the book. That's what he would want. Not anybody else, not take anybody else's opinion, not take anybody else's uh, rendition of it. But when you read it yourself and you remove the fact of maybe this wasn't God's book, you start to see the flaws in it every single page. And I mean that literally. Every page, there's a problem in this book. Now, again, is there some nice lines? Is there some nice red letters from Jesus? Yes. But again, if Jesus were real, would he speak in only parables? It almost seems like he's a fantasy character. Where's the real talk? Where's the real conversations? Doesn't seem like much. It seems kind of like a, a fabrication. But again, I think it makes sense to me that Jesus was real. It makes sense that he came here and he spoke out against the Old Testament God, tried to change some of the rules. They tried to get him busted for picking up stuff on a Sabbath. And he said, no, guys, the Sabbath is not made. I'm sorry, people are not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is made for people. So he was trying to change some of the ways that they looked at things. And then the Jews got really upset because he was gaining a following. And they said, here's this guy telling people that God's inside him, telling people that God is uh, the kingdom of God is inside you, and we don't like that. And he's getting a crowd, and so we have to turn him into Pilate and say, hey, this guy is claiming to be God. And then from there, they killed him. So uh, now again, the story has been embellished now to include rising from the dead, you know, the tomb, the rock rolls away from the tomb. Uh, even though the stories don't jive, you know, in one story it's like, Oh, the women went and told all the other disciples who then met him that night. Then another gospel is like, and the women left and never told anybody ever. There's just literally the two endings of two gospels. Maybe I need to bring those up when I say that. People never believe me. So we will find it. Let's see which one it is. So we'll start at John, just to check if it's at the end of John. I don't think it's at the end of John. Let's see here. John chapter... The primacy of power, turning round for me, Peter saw the disciple who was Jesus loved. They had landed. Okay. Manifestation in Galilee. The evangelist epilogue. Where is his death? Thomas. The disciples. Mary Magdalene. Okay, so we're just here at the tomb. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. 
So as she wept, she stood down and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in their white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been laid. They said to her, Woman, why art thou weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have taken him. When she had said this, and she turned round and beheld, Jesus was standing there, and she did not know what that it was Jesus. Okay, so this is a problem for me. Why do they always say this? So, because people are like, oh, he definitely rose from the dead. There's stories about it. But here's a story where they went into the tomb. He's not there. She turns around, and it is Jesus, but she did not know that it was Jesus. So therefore, couldn't it have just been an imposter? Could they have just faked a different guy? And then she turned around and said, hey, I'm Jesus. I rose from the dead. And they'd be like, you don't look like Jesus. Well, yeah, I'm in my fresh, my fresh garb now. It just doesn't make sense. That's really kind of weird. Um, Jesus said to her, woman, why art thou weeping? Whom does thou seek? She's thinking that, I'm sorry, she, thinking that he was a gardener, said to him, Sir, if thou hast removed him, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning, she said to him, Rabbi, that is to say, Master. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my father I and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and these are the things he said to me. Okay, so that's John, where we see that the ladies talk to the disciples after. Let's go real quick to Luke. Luke. Gotta love the uh, white people who wrote the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nice names. Right out of the Middle East. Uh, Let's go here. Luke. And the last instructions of Jesus. And Jesus appears to the eleven. Um, where is the death here? And they remembered his words. The women at the grave, okay? We've got, but on that first day of the week, early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled back from the tomb. But upon entering, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And when it came to pass, while they were wondering what to make of this, that behold, two men stood by them in dazzling raiment. And when the women were struck with fear and bowed their faces to the ground, they said to them, Why did thou... Seek the living one among the dead. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be betrayed in the hands of sinful men, and he be crucified, and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words, and having returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women who were with them who were telling these things to the apostles. But this tale seemed to them to be nonsense. And they did not believe the women. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths laid there, and he went and wondered to himself what had come to pass. Okay? So there's Luke, same kind of story. Women find Jesus gone, and so they tell the other apostles. Let's go to Mark. Mark chapter 16. The woman at the grave. And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might go in and anoint him. And very early on in the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had just risen. And they were saying to each other, Who will roll that stone back from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back, for it was very large. But on entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were amazed. He said to them, Do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold the plate where they laid him, the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you in Galilee. There you shall see him as he told you. And they departed and fled from the tomb, for trembling and fear seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So, you know, slightly different story. Slightly different. Um... Let's go to Matthew. See how that one ends? Matthew chapter 28. Women at the grave. Now late in the night of the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to draw, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the... I always hate that word. Sepultry? Sepultry. Uh, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and drawing near, rolled back the stone and sat on it. The countenance was like lightning, and his raiment like snow. And for fear of him, the guards were terrified. 
and became like dead men. But the angel spoke and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, even said. Come, see the place where the Lord was laid, and go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen, and behold, he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Behold, I have foretold it to you. And they departed quickly from the tomb in fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them, saying, Hail. And they came up and embraced his feet and worshipped him. Then the Lord Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go, take word to my brethren that they are to set out for Galilee. There they shall see me. Okay, well, that's just the one story, I guess, that says that they didn't do anything. They didn't. They were just quiet. And then there is one, I don't remember if it's this, which, Bible, which gospel it is where they added the ending. It's not there in any of the manuscripts. Um, anybody know? I'm sure you guys know much better than me. I don't know what the chapter is. Um, so is it a gospel ending added? Let's see if that tells me where it is. So Mark 16. So we just were reading that. Oh, no, we're reading Matthew, Mark 16. So all of chapter 16? Or is there oh, the missing end? Let's see here. The gospel may be a familiar idea of the Christian faith, but that doesn't mean it's easy to believe or follow. In fact, it may sound crazy to first hear the risen Jesus is the true king of the Lord. Follow him. Blah, 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 blah. Common consensus holds that Mark was the first to embark on this epic task, but the gospel of Mark has a particular feature that people don't often talk about. A jarring, dissatisfying ending. What's going on with the end of Mark's gospel? If you turn to the end of the book, Mark 16, 9 through 20. 16, 9 through 20. Okay, well, that's all the way through the end. You'll find the account of Jesus appearing to his disciples after his death and resurrection. He leaves them with a motivating speech to preach the gospel to all creation. At first glance, quite satisfying. Jesus is alive and the way forward is clear, but there's a problem. Most scholars agree that this ending was a later addition since it is not present in the manuscripts. It seems that later scribes were uncomfortable with Mark's inclusive ending, so they provided an appropriate conclusion with what they knew had happened. Scribal editions of this proportion are extremely rare and can easily be discerned from comparison to early manuscripts. So what's the real conclusion of Mark's gospel, and does it change how we respond to it? Mark 16 begins with, after Jesus' death. Three women go into the tomb, anoint the body. Instead of finding Jesus, they encounter a young man. He's talking to the women, proclaiming Jesus is risen. Then he commands them to go share the good news. This command came with a promise. If the women believed and obeyed, they would see Jesus when they arrived. How do these women respond to the first gospel message? Trembling. They flee the scene. It's unclear whether they obey the command to go to Galilee. The final words of Mark's good news leave us wanting more. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Oh, so that's supposed to be the end. Mark 16, 8. So when we read that, and they departed and fled from the tomb and trembling of fear and seized them and they had nothing to anyone. They said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. So I guess then 9 has been added. From 9 to 20. Now when he had risen from the dead early on the first day of the week, yeah, it kind of seems like it... Uh, Seems like it. All right, I see. Oh, boy. Tons of questions over here. Let's go to the questions. Let's go to the questions. We've got... Uh, who was up there first? Description. Okay. Exposing Ma's tricks. Nice to see you. I like it. <clears throat> Have you considered the maker of this world made the pyramids to help align the sky so that 666 would be riddled throughout heliocentrism? Made the pyramids to help align the sky... So that 666 would be riddled throughout heliocentrism. I, I don't know that. I, it's a good question. I don't know if that would, would that work? I don't know. Can't answer that one for you. Uh, God, go a little bit. There's my YouTube channel. Explains the crater earth theory. Thank you. I'm going to put that in here. G-O-D-G-E-V-L-A-M-S-T-E. Got you. Thank you. We've got, uh, I agree, Yahweh says in burnt offerings and sacrifices, was I not pleased, but a body hath I prepared for thee. Yes. Uh, your point about the Scripture is my point. Everything you bring up are Christian's points. I can literally explain what I'm telling you. Your point about the Scripture is my point. Everything you bring up about up are Christian's point. So I don't know what you're saying. So I'm. So you want me to argue it from a non-Christian point of view? I, I don't really understand what good that would do. Christians are the ones who believe this book, and they're the ones who have an idea about it, and God is... 
Jesus is all like the book doesn't say that there's a trinity in the Old Testament, but Christians apply that. They make it seem like it is. They try and say that when it says let's make man in our image, like oh they're talking about him and Jesus, even though God doesn't mention anybody else and actually says in the Old Testament there is nobody else but me. There is no savior but me. There is no uh, God but me. He doesn't say oh and my son and my Holy Spirit. Why? Because that was added after. It's clear, clear as could be. Uh, have you heard of Pascal's Wager? I have. Check it out. And I wanted to ask you what you'd describe Creator as instead of what's not applicable to describe this. Awesome, you discuss this. Thank you. I've described, uh, you know, go back to the beginning. God is uh, is us. God is an infinite being that doesn't have personality like us. Why do I say that? Because if you're an infinite being that's all good, you don't really have personality because you're just all good. That's why I think this world exists, because God at some point wanted to experience everything. Well, since God is an infinite being, you cannot experience everything in infinite being. You can't be born. You can't die because you're infinite. But I do think that God could create a world that operates in time. Now, the problem is God's going to look at that world and say, well, I, still, I can't be anything other than God. What am I going to do? So by creating us as a piece of it, then that God gets to experience everything that we do which would be something that a God wouldn't be able to experience because gods can't have bad things happen to them. They would be able to control anything. So as soon as they make one other creature and give them free will, and they're also a piece of God, now God has made it impossible to determine. I know people would still say, oh, but God knows all things. I don't believe that. I believe if God knew all things, he wouldn't exist. There's no reason to exist. So I do believe that the reason we have free will is because it creates, just like in space, Science can't fix the three-body problem. God can't fix the three-soul problem. If you have three souls, all with individual um, free will, then you can never know the outcome of anything. Other than if you're kind of in charge of the whole thing, God could end the world at any time. So he is in charge of the whole thing. But he doesn't know what I'm doing tomorrow. That would be ridiculous. There's too many parameters to go in. So I don't think that, and if he knew all possible parameters, then why would you exist? What is the point? If I knew everything that was going to happen to me from this moment on, I know every word I'm going to say for the rest of the night and every word I'll say for the rest of my life and everything I'll ever do, why would I exist? It would be the worst experience ever to go through something you've already gone through. To go through, it would be like Groundhog's Day. Watch that movie and then tell me that uh, God knows all things. Uh, But Pascal's wager is basically live your life like there is a God because if you live your life like there's not a God, you're basically gambling your entire uh, eternity, right? But if you live your life like there is a God, then you're not gambling away your eternity. You're taking, you're kind of uh, hedging your bet. And, but I think God will, I mean, I think that those things will be discovered. Here's a crazy thought. And I don't like to say this because people don't, won't get what I mean. But I think that we judge ourselves, Just like I said, there is no throne of God. You're not going to stand in front of the throne and get judged because God is in you. So you are your own judge. Now, in saying that, you can't fool yourself. You can say like, oh, I'm going to start pretending like I did all good things in my life. No, you by by you saying that, you just judged yourself. By saying that you have to pretend something, well, now, now you've admitted that you've done wrong. So we can never get away from our own sins, if you will. And so I believe that you will judge yourself in the end. But you are the creator. The creator will judge you. The creator is the only one who knows your every thought and every move, but also you. So again, um, I think I know that sounds crazy. Uh, look up Elohim, the archetype pattern for the universe. Yahweh gave a man in 1930 a vision and a revelation and sent him out to the world to explain it all. Just something new for you to take on. Yeah, but I don't believe that. I just don't believe, I mean, just the thought of that is ridiculous to me. If God, Why would God go to one person and then tell that one person to go to other people? It's insanity to me that anybody would ever buy that. Why would God do that? If, if God is going to take the time out of his life to go talk to somebody, to, to why wouldn't just talk to everybody, right? That's the thing about, to me, is that if God wants me to know something, he'll tell me, not tell some ancient desert wanderers to write it in a book to then get it to me. That doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I don't think God told anybody about uh, in 1930 a vision or a revelation. Now, again, we are all inspired by God. So could that be a true thing that this guy did pull out of his psyche? That I can't, dis- I can't disagree with that. But as far as like 
there's a man with a beard and he told some guy to go do something? No. No, it's like the Billy Meyer case, right? The guy who believes in aliens. Supposedly he flew in space on a spaceship and his PR guy was trying to get me to interview him. And I said, hold on a second. I said, Billy Meyer, he went to space in a spaceship and he flew around. He's like, yeah. Like, did he see planets? He's like, yes. I'm like, never mind. I don't want to talk to him. (laughs) Like, he's just making it up. He's just making up what he thinks he saw. Um, He did not go to planets and fly around. Um, Have you researched the shroud? Forensics, two to 400 million watts for every short burst. It is a scientific enigma. First century Jerusalem, no doubt. Again, um, you are putting your, your hope in men so badly to say, no doubt. No doubt some guys that lived 2,000 years ago are telling you the truth about some shroud. Uh, no doubt. It has to be. I just think that that's folly. There's no, you can't prove things from, you can't prove George Washington existed. Okay. You cannot prove that, but yet it's a no question that the shroud is, uh, what is 400 million watts for every short burst? Um, I believe that the shroud is actually somebody else, um, but that's just me. And I don't think it's very old, like a thousand years old. Uh, but I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, the shroud of Odessa. Is that why am I thinking that? Why do I think that in my head? The shroud of Odessa. The image of Odessa. According to Christian tradition, the image of Odessa was a holy relic consisting of a square or rectangle cloth upon which a miraculous image of the face of Jesus has been. Im- oh, that's the face image, not the shroud. Gotcha. The first icon, the image, also known as the Mandalayan, in Eastern Orthodoxy, is also known as the Archipolation or something. Icon not made by hand. In the tradition recorded in the fourth century by Eusebius of Caesarea, uh, King Agbar of Odessa wrote to Jesus asking him to come cure him of an illness. Yeah, I've heard this story, but I, I now I'm trying to remember. Isn't it the king that it's his face? Agbar received a reply re- letter from Jesus declining the invitation, but promising a future visit by one of his disciples. One of the 70 disciples, Thaddeus of Odessa, is said to have come to Odessa bearing the words of Jesus, by the virtue of which the king was miraculously healed. Subius said that he had transcribed and translated the actual letter, blah, 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 the first round of existence of a physical image in the ancient city of Odessa, uh, writing about 593, who reports a portrait of Christ of divine... It's just weird to me. So 593 is the first writing we have of it. Uh, so for 500 years, think how long 500 years is. That's the year 1500 for us. So from 1500 to 2000, there's just some shroud that nobody mentions, um, and then you find out in 2000, I would have my doubts about it. Uh, the m- image was moved to Constantinople in the 10th century. The cloth disappeared when Constantinople was sacked in 1204 and is believed by some to have re- reappeared as a relic in King Louis XIV's uh, house. The relic disappeared in the French Revolution. What? The provenance of the Odessa letter between the 1st century and its location in his home own time are not reported by Eusebius. The materials, according to the scholar Robert Einsman, are very widespread in the Syriac sources with so many multiple developments and divergences that it's hard to believe they could all be based on Asubius's poor efforts. The Eastern Orthodox Church observes a feast on a certain day for... So it's gone now? Hmm. Where did it go? Links with, oh, links with the Shroud of Turn. Author Ian Wilson has argued that the object venerated as the Mandalayan from the 6th and 13th century was in fact the Shroud of Turin, folded in four and enclosed in an oblong frame so that only the face was visible. Wilson cites documents in the Vatican Library and the University of Leiden, Netherlands, which seem to suggest the presence of another image at Odessa, a 10th century codex, Codex Vosiniaeus Latiniaeus, found by Gino Zanadnati, in the Vatican Library, contains an 8th century account saying that an imprint of Christ's whole body was left on a canvas kept in a church in Edessa. It quotes a man called Smyrna in Constantinople. King Agbar received a cloth on which one can see not only the face, but the whole body. Um, so, I th- yeah, it's not the story I'm looking for. i got to find what that story is of the shroud. I'm going to write myself a note, because there's a great story that uh, seems to place it as somebody else. But it's weird. All these years, you know, it's always 8th century, 9th century, 10th century, 11th. So it does seem like you could have some missing years here. And by the way, if you're a member at the library, the Telegram library, I've got every 
every volume of Fomenko's work. So you can go right and learn about when Fomenko says all this is happening and his proof for it, if you so chose. So, um, all right, I'm going to head out. Oh, let me check real quick. Let me get through these. The longest flight ever recorded is what? Uh, of one specific Arctic turn is almost 90. Wow. I'd say from the center, then a full lap of the circumference chasing the sun all year round. Good idea. Good point. I'll check it into it. I'm going to look into it. 90,000 kilometers. Yeah. Check it out. Yes, no trinity. Yahweh is a unity. Correct. Yes, Yahweh makes it very clear. He is one. He's not the son of man. He doesn't walk on earth. He does not do man things. And he's the only savior. So he would not then go to heaven and be like, nah, I'm going to send myself as a savior. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to walk on earth. I'm going to call myself a son of man. It's kind of confusing. To cut to the point, yes, you are Yahweh manifested in the flesh, just as the Messiah. It's the entire point of the scripture. Good. I think that that is the truth as well. And yeah, you're supposed to find that Christ consciousness um, inside you. It's the same thing Jesus is talking about. It's why he speaks in parables, because he's kind of you, right? Speaking to you. Is the spark of God, the light proton that occurs when a female's egg is impregnated by a sperm? Pull up a clip of it, and then Big Bang Story is our embryonic cycle, sperm, hairy embryo, human. Yeah, I believe that that's true. And you know they changed the rule, or not rules, they changed the, they used to tell us that the fastest sperm got to the egg, right? Which they don't say anymore. It's it's selected by the embryo, or by the egg, I mean. Um, what are you saying? Pull up a clip of it. I've never seen a clip of a f egg actually get inseminated. Let me see. I thought that that was just something we can't even see. Uh, let's see if there's any videos. If you've got a link, Faye, that'd be awesome. Oh, here's, well, this is a step-by-step -step look at the IVF process, fertilization of an egg. Let's check it out. Maybe it is here. Let's see what we got. This one right here. Oh, no, I don't want to go to that. Sorry, we want to go to a YouTube would be better. Uh, let's go ahead. Were you talking about one that's artificially inseminated? Or a uh, YouTube? Oh, okay. So we're going to look up, uh, see, I don't know if we can find a sperm. Impregnate egg. I don't think I've ever seen that. How to break through. Why eggs don't fertilize. So Sperm switch swimming patterns to locate egg. I mean, think of what they've told us in the pictures they drew, and then look at what they really can see and what a difference it is. And they probably won't even... I mean, look at this. Like, this is what they see that they've determined everything about. They know it's inside the sperm. They know it's... I mean, come on. Is that real? I mean, that cannot be real. Wouldn't there be way more there's millions i thought i don't think that could even be real there's no way how many sperm uh go after a For the 1,000 sperm entering the tube, only around 200 actually reach the egg, and in the end, only one lucky sperm out of this group of 200. Is that it? Do you guys remember being told it was like millions? Why do I remember being told that it was millions? Oh, wait. Now it says 100 million. Hold on. Price doesn't happen right after having sex. A lot needs to happen in order for... Okay, where does that number I just saw? Uh, control, find, do I see millions somewhere? Okay. It's a long journey through the vagina, cervix, uterus, and into the fallopian tubes, but very few sperm actually make it to the egg. On average, there are 100 million sperm released during ejaculation, but that number drops to about 100 to 200 by the time they reach the egg. That's insanity. I never knew that. That's crazy. I did not know that. That's cool to think about. Because, yeah, I like the idea that you know, as bad as your life might be, you are the best out of all those sperm. <laughs> but now I don't think that's true anymore. If you look up, uh, oh, sorry, you're looking, that's a bad view of the screen. There you go, it's a laser. Um, if you look up, you know, uh, fastest sperm myth, they will tell you now that it's a myth. Oops, I was searching up here. Fastest sperm myth. 
there we go. The idea that sperm race to the egg is just another macho myth. The entrenched notion that human sperm, once ejaculated, engage in a frantic race to reach the egg has completely overshadowed the real story, which is even is even better, right? Is that, uh, let's see, one might think as science has progressed, it would crush the Russian doll theory through its lucid biological lens, but that's not precisely what occurred. Instead, when the microscope finally enabled researchers to see not just eggs but sperm, the per-formation theory morphed into a new, even more patriarchal political cons conceit. Now, held prisoners as some students of reproduction, the egg was merely a passive receptacle waiting for vigorous sperm to arrive to trigger development. And sperm, the head of each, contained a tiny preformed human being, a homunculus, to be exact. The Dutch mathematician and physicist Nicholas Hart, something, uh, inventor of the screw barrel microscope, drew his image on the homunculus when sperm became visible for the first time in 1695, he did not actually see a homunculus on the sperm head. Hart Soaker conceded at the time, but he convinced himself that it was there. More powerful microscopes eventually re relegated the homunculus to the dustbin of history, but in some ways not much has changed. Most notably, the legacy of the homunculus survives in the stubbornly persistent notion that the egg is a passive participant in fertilization, awaiting the sperm to swim through the hailstorm of challenges to perpetuate life. It's understandable, though unfortunate, that a lay public might not ad might adopt these erroneous sexist paradigms. It's probably racist too, really. But because the egg always chooses the white. It's, you know, I get it. But biologists and physicians are guilty as well. It was in the relatively recent year of 1991, long after much of the real science had been done in stone, the American anthropologist now at the university described what she called a scientific fairy tale, the picture of an egg and sperm that suggests that the female biological processes are less worthy, the ovary, for example, is depicted with a blah, blah, blah. I just heard that, it, you know, you can watch it and it it's it selects one. So they're all trying to get in. There's no, It's not the first one and it's not like the, the weakest part of the wall or something. It's just the eventually the egg opens up to just allow one in, um, which is crazy. Or more if it's, a you know, twins. Uh, let's go back here. And thank you very much for that, though. Did I miss some part of that question? I think I got it. We're almost good. We're almost there at the end. We're almost at the bottom. Uh, this one. When Yahweh revealed himself to that man, it erased the man, and that was Yahweh walking around telling men. So yes, very true, he didn't send a man on his behalf. What? When Yahweh revealed himself to that man, it erased the man, and that was Yahweh walking around telling men. So yes, very true. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're kind of playing off my same line of thinking. I think you would have to search spark when egg is impregnated. Spark? There's a spark? Is impregnated. When a sperm meets an egg, sparks fly, literally. According to a study published in Scientific Reports, an explosion of zinc fireworks occurs when a human egg is activated. But you got to be kidding. you got to be kidding. Let's see this. This one. Nope, this one. Yes. You know, you can also get a spark in your mouth if you eat a wintergreen lifesaver. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't think that's real. Uh, this is supposed to be a sperm going into the egg. Let me look a little careful here. Let's. Uh... Yeah, I mean, one thing is I have a problem with is it says right here zinc is visualized outside the human egg. As so, is that like they're making a model? I don't know. Huh. Okay, well, looks a lot different. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow, I did see it over here. Do you see that in lower right? Look at this lower right. Watch this one. Huh. <laughs> That looks pretty legit. There's that one. Wow, what the hell? There's that one. That one. Huh. Well, that's going to fuck with my mind tonight. 
Scientists just captured the flash of light that sparks when... Wow, what the hell? That's badass. That is badass. Women are badass. How did you guys get so confused and think that like, oh, I, I'd rather have a job and a career. I'm going to go make some... When like you literally have the like the most important job that there is. And you've let people talk you out of that. Pretty sad. You know, they say there's 30% less children in this generation from 2000 to 2020 than there is of any generation before it. It's, uh, you know, the boomers was the big one. Uh, I don't even know what I'm called for the eighties. What is the eighties called? Gen X. I don't even know the number, the names, but whatever, but there's 30% less children now. Um, if they would have gotten the vaccine though, we'd have to clean up that 30% quick. Zinc sparks fly from egg within minutes of fertilization. That is crazy. I've never seen anything like that. I don't like the, I like the other one looked more real. Uh, the moment of conception. Let's see. Oh, it's the same video. Uh, that looks fake. Uh, uranium, how it's made. The zinc spark is an inorganic signature of human egg. That's crazy. I wonder what, because something like that, you know, must have got it all started, right? Or something. I don't know. I don't know how it got started. But maybe God is just light. Maybe that's the soul entering. Who knows? What is that? Really? To make them visible now, you can view through an advanced microscopy. Phenomenon first observed in two. What? So it was all looks so different than what people would expect. Um, they just lied to everybody about everything. I mean, you know, it's like chromosomes, right? Chromosomes, we think like they're like, oh, we can count them and stuff. Well, then I found out from like 1905 to 1950, they were wrong by the by the about the number. They were off a bunch. This is what we always see. Where's the real picture of them? Is this it? No, no, that's not chromosomes. So it's like I don't even know where's the page that shows us them counting them. If they look like this, I mean, you, th once you see them, I've actually seen what they call them. It's like, what? How would anybody know what they're even looking at? Like there's going to be no, let me see if I put real chromosomes, microscope. And even if they show it, I probably won't even believe it. Like these, let's see, real microscope mitosis. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know. So you're saying this exists in each cell? if I'm not mistaken. And then from this, they tried to count them. That's crazy to me. I don't even know. So they tried to count. Oh, look at this one. Oh, this is going to be fake, right? The chromosome to see this as well, the cell. Well, the chromosome into what is called chromatin fiber in order to access the DNA for this. Now unpack the chromatin. DNA can. Yeah, they're just making shit up. Making shit up, I tell you. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. There's no more questions here, but beautiful. Check real quick, make sure there's no more uh, super chats or anything I need to do. Let's go to here. Uh, super chat, Google Sheet. That's done. What's that noise? DNA animation by Drew Berry. Theo Kirkley says, can I call you live? I don't know what time you did that. Oh, 512? Uh, well, you, there's, no, not now. Um, thank you very much. Over the two bucks, I appreciate it. And we've got, today I pronounced the fractional reserve fiat banking system dead. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Those were yesterday. Okay, good. Just the one today. Thank you very much for the two bucks. I appreciate it. Very kind of you. And one more time, we'll go to Rockfin and check it out. See who be there. 30 bucks. We've got, Ashley was the last one. And we've got 3D Big Buddy Bob. Great show, Jaren. Keep seeking, which might be the point of all our journeys. That's all I'm doing, and you're welcome to listen. Stay with me, watch with me, and then if it doesn't match your worldview or you think I'm on my ro off my rocker, then just be like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't think that like Jaren does. But maybe there's something that you do gr grab onto and be like, oh, I do like that. That's beautiful. Um, and again, it's no, it's not hurting anybody, and people are free to their own beliefs. And I, you know, by all means, if they want to still believe in the God of the Old Testament, I just can't imagine that ever being God. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, if you're God, you would give people morality so that they could determine when somebody was actually talking about God. So if they prevent, present you with a book, and that book is not a book of God acting moral, then right away we should be like, hold on, 
why would God give us this book? Why would he give us morality to be able to tell right from wrong and then show us the things that he does in his past that we would all consider wrong? They just can't be. Why would they do that? Why would he do that? Um, I don't think he would. Just me, I don't go as far as some other people on the fake stuff. What's fake about that or something? I just don't. It doesn't... I don't think I don't see the need for it. It doesn't change my life if it's fake or not. So I just kind of go with it. And if people want to call it real, go right ahead. Do it. Okay, we're gonna say goodnight here in a second as soon as I find something to play on the way out of here. I don't want to play the Jaren song again. I know it's getting old. People are probably tired of it. Let's go find some show. Jeez. There is not much anymore. Mm. Problems with the globe by Jaronism by Flat Earth. What is this? Weird. What is this? <laughs> I didn't even see these videos. What are these? Oh, this is not my account. This is somebody else. Man, people love to put my in. What is with me? Am I that amazing that every person has to put me in every one of their videos and thumbnails and talk about me? It's like flattering, but at the same time, hella, hella gay. Hella, hella, gay. And we could, if we wanted to, we could ask um, Stephen Hawking because, oh, what's that? Oh, that's uh, prime time. His prime time, 99, on the grind, all the time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we could ask Stephen Hawking what he thinks of uh, that, and Stephen Hawking would tell us the truth. He would say that it's a... Uh, oh, not this guy. He has the most annoying voice ever. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. You're supposed to say, um, I can't even find it. I did have one where he says, hella gay, man. Where's that? I got this one. Heliosexuals. Yeah, I know, but where's the hella gay one? That's better. Uh, I don't see it. Um, well, I've died a few times. Yes, I know you've died a few times. <laughs> I know you have. Uh, <laughs> that is funny. I'll laugh my ass off of that. All right, let's find it over here. What are you doing? What? View all, view more. Can you organize these by new? Nope. Oh, yeah. What's this? Oh, you can. Let's go by oldest first. Yeah. yeah Odyssey, by the way, guys. Very good. So many people are in my comments like, well, why did you remove this ISS video? Why did you remove this video? Why did you remove I say, I never removed. They're all on Odyssey, dude. <laughs> Don't delete videos like that. Like, well, I'm afraid people are going to find my videos. I got to delete it. Dumb. Dumbo and Dumbos. Dumber and dumb. And the dumbest. Uh, Nope. I want to find some musical treat by miss and i on the way out of here but i don't see anything um that's a good video very good video there fake space is a good one i like it it's cute i like it let's do that one we are going to be heading out i remind you guys please do your own research because when you do uh you'll never again believe all the bullshit hey, we taught to finish up that solar system project yeah. until hey, tomorrow uh, 12 noon guys hey, peace i just it's hard to make a model out of a model you know so we'll get to work it's very important to you. learning up there, out there, they can't go up there. I see their lies, and NASA's rockets ain't going anywhere. Wishing NASA wasn't tripping, tricking children with their con. Disney and the Nazi von Braun, can't they see where it all comes from? Their tricks don't work on me, all planetary imagery is F-A-K-E. Do the research and you'll see It's actually easy The ISS live stream Is extremely F-A-K-E F-U Scott Kelly The project's due tomorrow And I have to go to bed Remember, that model needs to be to scale how the hell am I supposed to make this to scale? The sun's supposed to be a million times the size of Earth. If you want to be successful in life, you gotta learn about okay, space. Hey, Dad, I'm doing the best I can. If I was smart as Einstein, I'd have an easier time. Stealing patents, calling a mind, controlling humankind with my math magical mind. Now all the kids at school think the space is really cool. But they just don't know yet That's one small step for man it was on a movie set Cut Their fake reality 
Gravity and galaxies are all FAKE. The sun, it orbits me. The moral of the story it's impossible to be on a GLOBE in SPACE. Cause it's all FAKE. No C U R V E. Do the research and you'll see. It's a PLA. As far as I'm concerned, I've had enough of science. I've had enough of all those doctors and PhDs. I know what's going on here. You've been lied to, and I mean big time. Go one more. That's fun. Hey, go down to nominal. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you Turn down your volume if you want. My wife and I attempt to sing a little parody. You may have heard the song before. It usually says all about that bass. In this case, it's going to be all about fake space. Yeah, it's pretty clear. There ain't no space crew. But we can fake it, fake it, like Apollo to the moon. Our rockets boom, boom, that all the boys chase. With perfect mathematics, flying about with spaces. Hasselblad magazine, working at Photoshop. You think this shit is real, and we won't ever stop. We steal that looty, looty, just raise them up. Cause every dollar that we steal from these guarantees will never stop. Yeah, Obama, he told me, don't worry about the lies. Just remember to monthly launch something to hypnotize. You know it won't be realistic cause we're gonna show a ball. But if that's what you're into then rotate and spin along. Because you know we're all about fake space, about fake space. No shuttles. We're all about fake space, about fake space. No bubbles. We're all about fake space, about fake space. No shuttles. All of space is fake. <laughs> Composite, Composite images. images. Go ahead and publish. No one notices. notices. And they'll be saying, hey, the Earth, Earth is flat. But I'm here to tell you that the Nazis and the Freemasons are in control of that. Yeah, Obama, he told me, don't worry about Up with deception, sometimes you will lose some guys. Yeah, our plans won't be perfect or even make sense at all. Cause we're NASA, we're Jesus, we come, come to save the fall. Because you know we're, we're all about and we're fake space, and there's space, space, no shuttle. There we're is all no about outer space, space. It's, it's all fake, no shuttle. No astronauts in space, no space, no shuttle. It's all about fake space. 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 We're NASA and we're fake and in space, no shuttle. We're flying in the ISS and spilled with the helium. There is no outer space, it's all space. I hope you fall out of the sky. Hi, 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 hi,
and I'm, I'm, I'm on here with Caleb because Caleb, uh, we found him on TikTok, as you, as many of you know, and um, he was going viral until the algorithm got him. And uh... what you're seeing here is a mirage. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Uh, not really. This bag has more holes than our story. This wasn't supposed to happen to me. Keep talking, we space walking. Got you unlocked with Neil deGrasse and Steve Hawk. You can call us fake, cause it really don't matter. Who you gonna trust, NASA or your shit? I never thought I would be fooled like this. When I look back now, my mind goes on a trip. Was in first grade when you shoved it in my face. Feels like the earth is still, but they told me it flew through space. How'd I believe in the ball for as long as I did? Even convinced me that a god did not exist. Every morning I'm watching the sunrise The earth isn't spinning around Just your eyes and look around I never thought my morals would fade But instead, I became an astronaut who's fake in space I'm no commander, I'm a thief of my blimp ship flying high Pretending that I'm on a mission on a rocket through the sky We fool you with deception before we come a-crashing Everything we do is a falsehood Yo, if I could go back and say no to NASA Don't you know they'd shoot me right where I stood? All of this pretense is all the bullshit The load's getting too much Scams done time to pull it You shoot the bullet That'll end my life I swear to you I'd be fine if I died tonight Let me tell you about all the minds we fractured Through forced indoctrination caused by NASA They have always been the seed of your dreams Clouding up your minds with all the untrue things Lies that were passed down uh, Always had us laughing We fake space walk See choreographing So please expose our lame trick And free the whole world Trapped with arithmetic Gonna take the good, leave the bad Relearn what I had Knowing that I've been fooled many times in the past Oh, cause I don't wanna make the same mistakes I did Not gonna get high by the space again You question the fall. Oh. You know the sun is coming around, and then you won't fall down just like the sun is going around. You see the world spinning around, but you can't be found. Just open up your mind and look around. Look around. Tribute to everyone's favorite person.
growing lettuce 200 miles from down students, all the other wonderful things. NASA CGI CGI Welcome to NASA CGI Center This is where we brainwash kids and murder the dissenters The science that we do does not affect your daily life Throwing rockets up all fake life Cause NASA's everywhere We engineer the models that you think are there those faces fake, don't question us, cause that's not fair. Our equations work out perfectly, we don't need prayer. Just have faith we're there. I'm not a pretty picture, you're gonna find the modern space. We've got earth, earth, what's the problem? CGI. I hate this guy. They always lie. Not in the sky. We catch the world off guard Raise the root, cause lying is hard So hard We do no research Just showing you these images that are absurd We can even make you think you're on a spinning earth And with selection bias We can prove the curvature Only with our work Burning three. We have, a, we have a cutoff. Take those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not in the sky. They use CGI. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a CGI. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaronism, back with a little song for you today. Originally written and performed by Chris Rock. Can you imagine telling your black wife that you president? Honey, I won. I'm president. No, we president. <laughs> no, not that Chris Rock. The Chris Rock from the Flat Earth Reality Channel. So thanks, Chris, for letting us take a stab at it. It's still by far our favorite Flat Earth song. And sorry we took so long to get to it, but we enjoyed doing it. A link to his channel is in the description as well as a link to the original song and also a link to download our version, the MP3. So without further ado, here it is, performed by Missa and the seasoned tenor in the group, yours truly, Eratosthenes Was Wrong, by Chris Rock. Aristotle Copernicus 
Newton, Einstein, and the rest. Even Aristophanes was wrong. Now you'll hear this amazing song. They don't have a shred of proof, cause the earth is still and just don't move. Horizons at eye level and flat. Star show no stellar parallax. Madison, Morley, Sonia. Shares his creed and groanings less than magic crew. Be sure they're Satan's children, too. play. It's time to come up clutch and end their ball game. Incoming asteroids, could it be Earth? We'd be destroyed, we'd be destroyed. One big sun flare, that's all she wrote. We'd be destroyed, we'd be destroyed. Clinton and Obama, they just both Now you've heard this amazing song.